Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting being held this March 9th, 2022. Uh, it is now shortly after five o'clock. This is being held in a hybrid Zoom uh, at, here at the municipal offices at 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield, Massachusetts, 01373. <clears throat> this meeting is held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including in an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which is general law chapter 30A section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical difficulties, technical difficulties uh, interrupt the virtual broadcasts unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in a specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Office with remote participation details listed. The dial-in number is 312-626-6799, in ID 911-604-1582. The passcode is 57001. For the Zoom link, go on to the Town of Deerfield website and click on this meeting and the Zoom link will be there. I hereby call this meeting to order. Sure, uh, so I make a motion to, we'll be going into executive session from um, about 5 p.m. to 5.45 p.m. Pursuant to general law chapter uh, 30A section 21A3, and subject to the chairman's declaration and a roll call vote, the select board may meet in executive session to discuss strategy with respect to uh, collective bargaining with the Massachusetts uh, Coalition of Police, IUPA, AFL-CIO Police, and UPSEU Highway, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town. Pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, and subject to the chairman's declaration and a roll call vote, the select board may meet in executive session to discuss strategy with respect to um, anticipated litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the town. Does the chair declare? I shall do. And I second that. Okay. Um, we'll be we'll inviting roll. Chief John Paturik, Kate Federoff, Tracy, uh, Tracy, Casey, Warren, Town Administrator, uh, to this meeting. Roll call vote. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Metz. Aye, Dave Wolfram. And we'll return we'll to open session. Thank you. Thank you. We're now back in public. Uh, so uh, the first thing on our agenda is public comment. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll take public comment for up to 20 minutes. And we're uh, each speaker will be timed for approximately two minutes. Do we have any public comment at this time? Okay. Hearing, Hearing none. none. We'll go on with the. Did you want to do um, change? Do you want to get into your dis discussion items? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go on with the. Uh, our discussion items. Um, Shelly, we've got the MOU for the foster care reimbursement revolving fund. Change, we have to change our bylaw for that? You would, so we would have to add this. So the MOU would allow us, it's, it's a, the re foster care revolving fund is part of the Every Student Succeeds Act. And it, the revolving fund would be created under a different section of the law so we have to add that section and create the revolving fund with the limitations the control in other words the limit you can spend to and who can identify who controls it the name of the fund etc so i have that article actually drafted 
uh, but I will give it to council to firm it up. And essentially what this does is first you create the revolving fund, then you authorize to go to sign a, an MOU between various groups. It's DCF, it's DESE, it's FRS. So it's a group of folks coming together and essentially giving each other permission and, and agreeing to work together to make sure that you can transport foster care stu foster care students into the schools that they are currently working, you know, that they're currently attending. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what it's creating. And this is something I have a friend who actually does foster care herself. And she has, she struggles with this because she lives in one town, but the child goes to school in another, in a city nearby. So the transportation thing would help her her as a foster parent, mm -hmm. um, better serve the needs of the child. I know that she, Shelly had mentioned this last September, right? Yes. We just didn't get around to getting it done. So what then... we did was we waited till we were closer to town meeting. And you'll see in her email that she explains it a bit. Um, I went back and I looked at the section. She had sent the, the section of the law. So I have that reference in the proposed article. And there's so there's a two step process you create and, and I don't know what council is going to say for this right now I have an article about the MOU as well if that's necessary. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see what council says but well we've done we've done their uh, school revolving funds for like. Class trips and that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. at one point some like teachers would hold money or whatever and we ended up Barb and the school worked out. You know a, a revenue I, a revolving I, fund for that. I, I think we should just say that we support this yeah. and then Let the whatever it's whatever already action. on the warrant. Yeah. And okay. so each of the four towns has to do this. Yeah. So Shelly has been Shelly and Darius have been communicating. Us, do you want us to actually vote on this or do you still want us to have consensus? I think if you have consensus and just yeah. agree that it's already gone on the warrant, we'll let council yeah. the council review the language. Right. Right. That's good. And figure okay. out exactly Does what anybody have an estimate how much Cost. It depends on the school that you're sending to. So it's similar to out of district transportation. It depends on where you're transporting the child. But what happens is, is so there's an adjustment between the school systems. The reason you create the revolving fund is so that you can take in the receipts the and expend from that receipt account mm -hmm. to pay for the transportation. Okay. And a key part of this is the school has not asked for it to have seed money. They've asked for it to be established and they've asked for the town to consider an MOU and each of the four towns consider this. So they're setting themselves up to be successful if and when this happens. Yeah, and that's why I'm- Right, and, and it makes sense. It really right, does. Right, right. Whatever works out, you know, whatever the warrant language is gonna be favorable to making it successful seems like it's great. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I don't really- I kind of thought you would do that. Yeah. What? Well, that's why I've already added it to the warrant. But yeah. well, that's good. really Shelley's explanation. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm and if that. you have any other questions, if you want me to invite Shelley or ask her for other information, if you want to send me questions, I'm happy to do that. No. All right. I'm fine with that. So, uh, this doesn't really have a well. It is if the child's school choice. Well, I don't, that nuance of it, I don't want to speak to because I don't want to mis misrepresent anything. Okay. That's really a question that digs deeper into the, how things are, are worked out between the school systems. Yeah. All right. Do you just want to keep going through the discussion mm -hmm. items, David? Yeah. So we have a consensus on that. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing is the uh, Ostrowski APR. So we warned you, I think I put it in your mail for the last meeting that we had received this request for the Ostrowski APR. And so we all collectively jumped on it. And Tim Hilchey created a CPC application to utilize community um, yeah, community preservation, sorry, <laughs> community preservation funds to fund the $11,000 request as the local match for agricultural preservation for a property owned by Chetostrowski. It's plus or minus 
12 acres. What's the, so the town has committed 13,000. What's, and then there's we committed 13,000 for Fisk. Oh, I see. Okay. I see for the Fisk property. And so this is 11 this for is, this, this one. This is another application. Yeah, so this is Got a separate it. application. Okay. Um, their intent is to close after the beginning of the fiscal year. So mm -hmm. we put it in as a FY23 request. The, the request reflects the allowable local match, which because we're a right to farm community, mm -hmm. we don't have to match it with 10%. We can match it with 5% because we really commit by being a right to farm community to supporting these when they come through. Right, Carolyn? Yeah. Yes. And traditionally, we've been able to, uh, I don't want to say get away with, but been able to, to fund the 5%. Meet that need. And, and uh, APR program seems to be okay with it. Yeah, so, so they were mandatory for most communities 10%, but you know, we allow we have in the past, I mean, obviously with COVID, our town hall was closed, but we had offered, um, you know, the conference room, you know, people for the APR person to stay here and work out of this office and stuff. And as a result, we've um, been able over the years to do the 5% funding level. So and they've been fine with that. And this is to put property into APR, protect the property. Yes. Uh, so my only, my only hang up on that is in this property, that's not the issue because it is kind of a vital piece of land, but we really have no property in town to build on. You know, and we, we protect every single acre, and yet we, we do need to think about growth. It, not well, that, not, not talking about this specific yeah, but property. APR is heavily agricultural land, brother. I'll get that, but. If people choose, the town has not matched. Uh, other than prime soil, mm -hmm. um, top agricultural product producing land, the town has not done. There has been some protection of marginal property, but the town has never contributed to anything but the top five percent. I'm just concerned that I know. Well, we need growth, and there's nowhere to build here. I mean, there's really no land left. Yeah, I agree. But so we got to think about that long term when we do our match plan. Like, but if, if we you, do all every this, survey, we have everybody... every survey that has come out has said people want. It to feels preserve... good, right? You get that. But they... no, no, no. People want to preserve agricultural land. I get that. I compl and I do too. But what I'm saying is that people need to also understand, I know. like, I know. people. But that's people what we're are... trying. But Trevor, that's why we're trying to do this campus process and revitalize the downtown. We need but, to change our zoning for downtown to do mixed use, stuff like that. So let me just, so what I'm saying is that it, Deerfield is going to shrivel up with no tax revenue and no growth if we constantly protect everything. We have to think long term about where we're going to build and where we're going to have housing in the future because we can't survive. You get people that are elderly taking care of a giant home nowhere to build small homes. I mean, luckily we did something at the base of Shuttle Up and that was a stretch. Like, I mean, that was like an area where you really didn't want to build because it was a beautiful spot right next to the mountain, but agricultural field. I'm just thinking long-term, we really do need to think about where we're going to expand and grow or else we're not going to have a tax base. Well, except housing never pays for itself on the tax base. If you're looking for that. tax base- But you yeah. need a place for your people to live. Yeah, but look at our 70% of our budget is school related. Mm -hmm. So housing does not pay for itself. I didn't, well, if initially, you can't initially. Use, you can't use that but as- But we need housing. people. Yeah, right. We need people and we need places to live. We don't have any property to invest in with business growth it's, either. It's, There's no growth. That's, that's more important. It's I know. Commercial industrial. Yeah. If that's, that we, we make money on your commercial industrial. We make money on mm -hmm. farmland. We, we don't collect a lot on farmland, but it doesn't cost us anything right. to do this. Whereas homes, just think of the multiplier, regular ed, $18,000 a year. That. It's a whole bunch of- But not of everybody costs. has kids. You no, know, you've got older people that want to move into our community and spend money and they're retirees and it's a beautiful saying, place to live. I'm just saying that housing generally doesn't pay for itself. So. But we do need it. A huge shortage. 
Yeah. It is a shorter, but but I didn't mean to get sidetracked. I'm just saying we you change your zoning like the mixed use zoning downtown to mm -hmm. encourage female building up. Right. And and you encourage density in your village districts, mm -hmm. which you do. Right. And and so I mean there is all this revitalization is part of our revitalization of the downtown. Mm -hmm. And you make it more desirable to live in our village center. And that's where your housing units you know really count building a single family home on two acres of land costs us money mm -hmm. and it chops up the landscape and it, it's not it's not i understand the there's no nowhere to grow downtown here right but that's not Couple really of true lots. you have to be you have to be creative in how you do your zoning yeah. and that's why you have mixed use zoning so it's possible to have commercial and housing agreed in place but not a lot of space down here it's all taken up already yeah but that doesn't mean you can't redevelop mm -hmm. true like the i think of the classic example the cumberland farm spot retail yeah. below housing above yeah will be not great performing lot but you could do a lot with that space mm -hmm. yeah i mean look what amherst did in that corner they built right up and I, know. I mean, it's a little more than I'm saying, but I don't know. Okay, sorry about that. Just yeah, no, that's okay. Always fighting for space. So I don't have a support letter for that, but I will get one. Um, if the board is willing to support this and take a vote to that effect, um, directing me to finalize that letter, it would be similar to the Fisk letter mm -hmm. and have the Chair, sign at his convenience on behalf of the board, or do you all three want to sign? No, no the chair's I, I'm, fine. I'm comfortable having the chair. Sign. Yeah. So I, I would make that motion. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carol. Aye, Trevor McCain. Aye, Dave. Yeah. Uh, next thing is requests for comment for the uh, four four. 477 Greenfield Road, Special for Center of the, for Education Research that supports balance. What's this? It is a request for comment on a zoning application. That's it. Is it here? Mm -hmm. um, that is the Wilmot Garden Center, I believe, right, Casey? I believe so. Yeah. That's what the pictures look like. Yeah. 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 Yep. Oh, I saw it's the first sale sign or something there. Mm -hmm. right now. Yep. Yeah, they used to be a garden center. I mean, I, I am fine with it, but uh, what, what, what are they the, uh, wanting to do? Make a why does it need a special? It's, it's a ag commercial agricultural, priority. right? Because it's agricultural, because it's a well. I'm not an expert here, I think the zone, um, zone is RA. but it requires a special permit because of how it's going to be used. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's a change. It's, re use. it's, it's residential agriculture. I'm not going to say, I, to be honest with you, I haven't had a chance be before Jen went on vacation. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a chance to go over this one with her. Okay. So if you wanted to not make a comment as a board, but ask some questions of the building commissioner individually. When, when does this come up? It, I think the hearing notice is it's their next hearing, which, hold on a second, let me just give you. When they say balance, do they mean truly like between your ears balance or like balance mm -hmm. in life? No, it's, it's a mixed use of different if different types of things and if yeah. you read the presentation yep. that goes I'm with it. it down. Yeah. yeah an elephant on a ball that's balance. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm not going to say a word that's funny. Yeah. Just so I understand. Okay. Yeah. So it's up to you whether you want to make a comment no, or not. It sounds like a good, um, good it's just the question been empty forever. So it's be nice the question is, is do on. you support that? You do you have yeah. any questions about that use? You could certainly attend the hearing and I'm still yeah. looking. Hold on. I just for some reason it escapes I'm my I'm not sure if we have brain. the opportunity to do the comments next meeting. I don't think so. Um, I don't know when the meeting is. Uh, usually they meet on Thursdays. 
I think, I think. And uh, I had the legal ad in front of me. <laughs> I forgot to put it in there. Oh, so it still has to be posted in the paper, though, right? No, it's been posted. Oh, it has. It's just not on for the 10th. Normally they meet. It's the so 27th. Thank you. It's the Well, see? you know what? Um, then we can table this until the 23rd. Okay. So it looks like they're going to raise the building a bit and then. You could table it for the 23rd. Is that what you want to do? Yeah, I, I, I would. Um, Let's get a little more info. I want to talk to Bob. Okay. Okay. I'll table it. Oh. I just feel like I would want a little bit more information before making a comment. And I'm sorry, I can't table explain it all. No, I just. No, it's fine. It's fine. We can just talk to Bob individually and then come together for our comments. I'm sure he'd be happy to talk for, to you. Um, on the, uh, I think we meet on, oh, I did the wrong month. Our, our meeting is on the 23rd. The next yes. Meeting. So that's in time for, um, okay. Yes. The meeting. Meeting. What day did you say it was, oh. Alex? The 24th? The 27th. 27th is Sunday. <laughs> Hold on. Let me check again. 24th, your fault for making 24th that. is the third. It's the 23rd. Yeah, it's the 24th. Oh, it no, is. That's, that's what right. I was just looking for. But we can still do we can still do it on the 23rd and they can still have our comments for the 24th. Yeah. And that way we're more informed. Yeah, so the notice says to allow a center for education and research that supports and enhances balance with use of agricultural means in the RA district as provided for in the zoning bylaw with the chapter and section referenced. So the other thing you guys could choose to do is do individual comments. I would feel better if we talked about it for that. I mean, this is similar. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it's all that different from a garden center kind of thing, but you know, from a traffic point of view, from, um, I mean, it's probably less traffic than you would in, you know, in general than you would have a garden center. But, I don't know. Um, so I would just like to get some information that we can talk about it. I always feel better when we have all three of us talking about something. Yeah. Oh, oh so yeah, we need to move our microphones closer because nobody can hear us. Thanks, Annalie. <laughs> oh, Annalie, sorry. I hate eating the mic. <laughs> well, if I had to guess, this is probably in our new work plan. True. Um, yep. Could be, but maybe not. Well, they're going to raise the building. They want to hear you. They want to hear you. So, so I think this may be in our new sub plan, so we're going to have to have the building commissioner look at that as well. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. So we'll hold off on that. Let's do our next meeting on the 23rd. Next thing on our uh, agenda is uh, vote to open the contract negotiations for the chief of police. So moved. Uh, second. Okay. All those in favor? I, I Kevin McDaniel. I Carolyn. I Dave Wolfram. Um, we give Kate the authority to start. And I would I would make a motion to have um, Dave Wolfram be on uh, negotiate on our behalf, right? Mm -hmm. Second. Great. All those in favor? Hi, yep. <laughs> Carol. See, and it's pointing yep. you. Yep. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, so, since we have a couple minutes, uh, if we could do Alex so he can go home, he has a grant and he wants us to. Just look at the uh, public health nurse. Alex, are you here? Hi, yes. Oh, good. Are you still here in Deerfield or are you at home? Yes, in the office. Yeah. Oh. I'm just actually, um, yeah. Yeah. How's it going? Good. Well, what, where is this on the agenda? Oh, right here, Dave. Um, oh, on the first page. Ahead. Okay. Okay. Do you guys have the copy of the um, of the public health nurse description? Yes. Okay. 
Do you have the a public health? health? Yep. Yeah. Description. Okay. It's double sided. I, I didn't have any questions. Did any of you have any questions? I had asked um, Alex to put it into the framework, the formatting framework that we uh, that we yes. changed to after the class comp study. So that's what he's done. Um, if I have any questions about that or need to talk to you, Alex, I'll get in touch with you offline. Yeah, sounds good. This is pretty much, he just changed his format. This is what we had talked about before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, uh, I changed some of the, <clears throat> the this description in order to fit the, uh, you know, fit the format that we discussed, Casey. So, yeah. So I have one question for you. Okay. With, with the chair's permission, may I ask a question? Yes. Um, is it really necessary, and we can have this discussion offline if you want, is it really necessary for a master's degree? Because frankly, that could position us out of the higher, the employment market. Uh, we can get rid of that if the board is, uh, feels comfortable with that. Because what, what we could do, Alex, to frame it is we could frame it where you say bachelor's de degree required, master's preferred. Yes. And okay. I have language that is in most of our job descriptions that depending on what the position is, you, you address it that way. I actually just changed it right now. Okay. okay. I like that. That sounds great. Yep. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. And while you're correcting it, just above that, you can start, instead of saying the state of Massachusetts, you say the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Oh, yes. Okay, now, Commonwealth. Now. Okay. Good catch, Dave. Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Got it. So if Alex and I find, if I, if there's actually a term I want you to use, Alex, so I'll send it to you. Sure. Um, but if the board is okay with this in substance, barring minor changes that you and I might have, yep. before we, we could send this to personnel on Monday. Personnel has a meeting on Monday and I've made a change to their agenda to allow us to discuss this topic. Brilliant, wonderful. I, I, that's, I would be thrilled. It would be a minor language change yeah. in that section. And sometimes personnel will come up with minor la language changes as well. So frankly, both committees usually get a chance to hash through it. But in this case, usually I take it to personnel first, but in this case, we need to get it through a certain, uh, we need, we have a time frame on this one. So, right. Yep. Yep. Whatever you need, Casey. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. So Casey, in the job, just, um, in the, in the publication of, of the job opening, you would then put in the number of hours. Right. So generally in the vacancy, I put the number of hours and I direct people okay. to just contact me, et cetera. And what I would do, Alex, I will make another, just a formatting change. I'm going to yep. take the header off because we don't usually put the header in, but okay. the thing that you and I had talked about was how, what their FLSA status is. So you and I yep. are going to have to go back and talk about that again. Yes. Yeah. I'll do some more research on that too. Okay. So that's, that's the, the only well, thing is determining FLSA state, you right. know, status. I just wanted to make sure it was clear that this was a part-time position. Right. Yeah. Right. So okay. generally I would put the There's number no of hours in a vacancy notice. Right. Okay. Because we didn't budget. Yep. We, we were only budgeting part-time and no bank. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. Great. Okay. All right. And then in regards to the grant, uh, this is just, um, from the uh, National American of County and City Health Officials. Uh, this is a $35,000 grant uh, to uh, provide to uh, rural uh, health departments. And um, when it comes to the cost of COVID-19 related expenses, so uh, mostly looking at uh, providing an infrastructure uh, for uh, COVID-19 uh, testing, vaccination, administrations, uh, when it comes to um, equipment necessary in order to, uh, you know, achieve the primary and secondary goals of prevention, uh, making sure that, you know, we can cover our expense if, if there's, um, uh, you know, an un, you know, unforeseeable event going on, you know, and we have to purchase something 
uh, that's COVID-19 related, then uh, we're able to meet that. Um, so uh, this is due um, March 16th. So um, I will. We would hope to have, um, we would hope to have an answer uh, prior to the budget being finalized so we can reduce the supply line yep. um, in a Florida health budget to down to $50. You know, this would, this would take the place. And, and also it comes in overlapping over a couple fiscal years. Yes, no, two years. Yeah, so this would um, allow us to have no supply line or, you know, $50 supply line for at least two years. So on our health budget, so that would make a big difference for us long term. Mm -hmm. Talking about, or is there no particular question? Well, I, I haven't seen it. That's no, okay. So he was, he's just letting me know about that he's yeah. working on it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think okay. there was some materials. To see. And, and, it, and we should have an answer hopefully before we finalize the budget. Okay, okay, that's great. And Alex, the, please. the grant would be administered by you, Alex. Yes, yeah, okay, yeah, he would, he would be able to handle it. Okay, so. Well, yeah, I know Casey's busy, so don't worry. <laughs> the rest of the world is smiling <laughs> yeah. at you. Can <laughs> um, Kim, we just, um, I noticed a nice article in the paper about the uh, testing um, program at the senior center and picture of you there as well. Yeah, did and, you see uh, the one with me? Uh, looks like I'm picking my nose. No, I'm kidding. No, no. no. <laughs> But it looked like, you know, when we got some initial results and people are starting to use it, which is great. Yeah, we had, um, what was it, 11 people uh, on Monday. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Curative is really happy, um, you know, that, that they're here in Deerfield. And um, I, I mean, it seems like it's going really well. You know, they accept walk-ins and, um, you know, the, you know, they told me that one, you know, a person didn't have insurance, whatnot, and um, they were able to get tested, and it was no right. cost and just reimburse uh, from the state level. So, awesome. you know, it's just, it's just wonderful in that regard. So uh, thank you. Like, it looks like um, Greenfield is shutting down from the from what the article right. said. Right? They're only they're going to have right. two places in Springfield, and that's it. Yeah, so that's good. So, that so a having here. it here is going to be one of the sole Franklin places County. in Franklin County. Yeah. 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 So it's pretty darn good. Yeah. yeah. So good move, guys. <laughs> Again, it's PCR you get, testing. You get all the credit for that. No, no, no. It's all you. No, no. You PCR just you, you just blame testing. me. You just blame me if something bad happens. Okay. Right, exactly. <laughs> PCR testing is available Monday, Wednesday, Friday, ten to one at the senior center, whether you have insurance or not. So please come. Yep. Um, and we were able to set up, we had a meeting today. Yeah, we are I, able to set up May 20th. Oh, yes. Uh, probably 3.30 to 7 at uh, the elementary school for COVID um, uh, shots. Oh, for, for the Mostly for boosters. boosters from oh, all good. the ones that we did in November and December. Oh, excellent. Kids, I wonder what that meeting was. That wants it, to. But... Then we also are setting up um, with Walgreens August 26th. And, and September 23rd, and oh, it will be for COVID, flu, shingles, um, pneumonia, uh, shingles pneumonia one. shots, yep. everything. I mean, Great. We, you can sign up for anything. That's awesome, so right before school. We are perfect. really, really excited because it is just before school. Mm -hmm. People can get boosters just before they go mm -hmm. back. And also, you anybody can get everything. We're gonna get high dose for seniors. Um, we're extremely excited. One of the uh, issues was we were going to have to set up a revolving account to buy our um, all our mm -hmm. flu doses and anything that we wanted. We were going to have to have a revolving account. It only costs twenty dollars for flu, <laughs> but you have to buy it pre-buy it, and then you get reimbursed well, for like forty dollars, right? Mm -hmm. so but I am yeah, and and I am working on that currently with Commonwealth Medicine and um, other agencies in that regard right. to make sure that Deerfield is set up um, and you know being prepared for the near future as well. So, um, but right now I I just think that this is a, a better deal right now. Okay. Um, so, yeah. 
and then we don't, you know, because that was we Who were one of the biggest. This year? Walgreens. Walgreens is oh, going to do it for us. <laughs> yeah, again, at, at no cost, cost and all the risks no by cost. another vendor. At no cost. That's great. And we're, we normally make a ton of money that mm -hmm. goes to the fur cause. Right. You know, you have your cost, your vaccine, and yeah. you get reimbursement. Mm -hmm. And so that goes to the pot. But we didn't, now that we're pulling out, that was going to be an issue. We're going to have to have a revolving account. But now we yeah. don't have to. Will we for the following year, though? Should we set something we up? Can, if we, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If this is successful, we can keep going with Walgreens mm. or we can set up a revolving account and make money. Yeah. <laughs> well, hassle. For sure. Even if we make money. Right. There's just a lot, a lot of time hassle. and staff and all that. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah. It, yeah. It's just not having to deal with it. It's, right. You know. Do you guys want to see the COVID numbers real yes. quick? What? Do you guys want to see the COVID numbers real quick? Yeah, they they, sure. look, they yeah, look fantastic. <laughs> All right, I'll be real quick. Okay, here we go. She's gonna square. Uh, let's see. Uh, here it is. All right. Oh, our hearing starts in three minutes, so we got to hustle. Okay, here we go. Boom. Can you guys see this? Yep. All right, great. So big drop going on. You know, testing uh, when it comes to uh, cases, hospitalization, and death at the state level. Um, we move on to looking at Deerfield. Um, you know, when it comes to case count. Uh, as you can see, we're just absolutely not, you know, just like one or two. Um, it looks like throughout the week. Um, next slide. And then our test positivity rate is absolutely uh, low. Um, so we're good. Uh, vaccination rate has gone up a little bit. Uh, really want to go ahead and emphasize about the booster vaccine. Yes. You know, we really just want to increase that number. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. I'm Thank sorry you, we Alex. have to go, but please. No, be you're good. <laughs> be careful going home, okay? All right. Wonderful. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye, Bye. Thank you. Okay. The select board is the local licensed authority for the town of Deerfield. Hereby, we'll hold a public hearing on Wednesday, March 9th, 2022, at 6 30 p.m., which is now. On the application of Treehouse Brewing Company Incorporated, located at 1 Community Place, South Deerfield, Mass. 01373, for the following license applications. Application to amend Kramer Brewery. Pouring permit. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 19C, and, and to remove kitchen and production area in Wing C and areas licensed under at Mass General Law. Chapter uh, 138, Section 19B, Primer Winery, and Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 19E, Primer uh, Distillery in Wing A. Applicant for a Primer Winery pouring uh, pursuant to Mass General Law 138, Chapter 19B, N, within 60, 65 square feet area adjacent to Primer Winery Production Area in Wing A. Application of a Primer Distillery Pouring Permit pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 19E O within 60, 65 square feet area adjacent to the Primer Distilling Production Area in Wing A. And application for a pouring permit pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 19H to serve malt beverages, wine, and distilled spirits throughout all licensed premises. Meetings are held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity of both in-person attendance and remote participation. For purposes of the in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will be host a meeting at night at, um, in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Office at the 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Massachusetts. And Great. Electronic is the same as hold that thought. Hold what thought? There's a technical thing to... that I need to do for Mark. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so just give me a second. Mm -hmm. I need to do something. Huh? We just need a second. She's working on a technical. <laughs> give me two minutes. We can give you two on. minutes. <laughs> we usually I would have Jen do this, but. 
Jen's enjoying her vacation. Give me time Jen is in Wipe Charleston. Your off my fingers. Good for her. <laughs> What's that? Is it good for Jen? Yes, exactly. Remember, Pat went to Jamaica last she year. She did, yeah. Man. I Nobody have... else has been taking vacations, Casey. Yeah, I know. Vacations. Casey's due. Casey's due. Casey's there you due. go. Hey, vacations Casey are has to important. get through, get through the important. budgets first. <laughs> yeah, she's been on vacation for the last year and a half. No, I, yeah. <laughs> we call that vacation? Oh, please. Oh, man. I think everybody is just overwhelmed. Yeah. So much Punchy. stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Does it work? It's thinking about it. <laughs> what are we trying to do for the presentation? I have to do a presentation and I didn't, we were in executive session, so I didn't have a chance to throw it on a thumb drive. So, oh, this is, um, yeah, the, slide um, deck. Slide deck. It's the slide um, deck for his presentation. So, um, it's not fatal, but it's just, it's helpful. Yeah. It would help because I didn't print it. I got it and I didn't have, we were about to go into executive session when you came in. So, um, you want to put it on a thumb drive? Yeah, we're, we're wound up from already an hour and a half of meeting. <laughs> Do you have it? Do you have a thumb drive? I have a thumb Alex? drive. Alex? I just tried and it won't let me in the meeting. That's what I was trying You're not to do. Allowed. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not allowed in the meeting. Uh, Probably. No, I'm not. Actually. No, that's out. I don't think so. Could have done it there. You know what? Can I mean, you if do you it? put it on Can a drive, I have a thumb drive board? if you want. I need to. It's getting on the meeting. That's the problem. Come on. <clears throat> Yeah, because you're on. on. This is town administrator. Meeting. I know, but it's got its own like. It's because I linked in through the. Well, sorry well, about we this, did... Mark. You want to talk Technical a little bit first? How are you? I'm, sorry, I'm doing well. Mark. <laughs> well, we could do introduction. Introduction. Sure. I, I think it's best to make sure the technical aspects are working as well. So yeah. For the record, Mark Borenstein, I'm attorney at the law firm of Badish and Dewey, representing Trias Brewing Company. Inc. Um, how's the sound? Is that working Sounds for good. The folks at home too? Yep. <coughs> Excellent. And Alex is here for us as our lawyer. And Alex. Alex Castro, Town Council of Mutual and Costa. Oh, awesome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So we got Damien on. Yeah, yes, Damien, so Damien Goudreau, here. the president of uh, Treehouse Brewing Company, Inc. Um, Hi, everybody. Uh, Damien, 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 how are you? Owner of Treehouse Brewing Company. Good to Hello. see you. Hi, Damien. The manager of record. I hope nobody's talking to me. Hearing me listen to my listen to myself talk to myself. <laughs> Problem is, is I can't get it to run. <laughs> Is that the one, Casey? Right it's there. It's going. It's the issue is it opened itself up completely, and I can't get it to go out of full screen so I can share. It. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Hold on. Yeah, that's what's happening. Is I I'm about to screen share it, and then it won't. It's giving me grief. Let's put it that way. I had it screen shared. There it is. Oh, there it is. Beautiful. There it is. Now all I have to do is get it. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Sorry about that, Mark. <laughs> all right, no problem. So, uh, so good evening again, Mark Borenstein, um, representing Triaz Brewing Company Inc. Uh, before we get into the actual applications, I thought it'd be helpful to kind of provide some images. I, I believe you've all been to the brewery, but for the folks yeah. at home as well, um, I thought it'd be helpful to kind of see where we've come. Yeah. at this point because it's a pretty dramatic change and i think it's 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 been a huge nice. asset to the town so casey if you could just briefly go through the photos here so this is obviously the the interior tap room mm -hmm. um lovely space this is the primary consumption area yep. um, that's in building c you get the next image obviously this is the lovely bar very nice and then we have the following image 
Casey, is the exterior patio area. So there's fire yep. pits, Adirondack chairs. It's, it's a lovely space and it's gonna be even uh, more used uh, when, the, when the seasons improve. Um, yeah. Here's the next slide. And this is obviously the, the auditorium. Yep. There's already been some concerts that have been uh, well received. It's sold out in record time. So yeah. but the Treehouse loves to see that. Yep. So um, if you go to the next slide, there's a summary of the application that I just kind of want to walk the select board through it. So essentially there's four applications before you this evening. It's somewhat technical, um, but before we get to the actual applications, just to over just provide an overview in terms of the state licensure. So Treehouse currently holds three licenses at this particular location. And so they hold the farmer, they hold the farmer brewery license under 19C, they hold the farmer distillery license under 19E, and the farmer winery under 19B. All right, so those are the state licenses. And those are really just to uh, manufacture and sell um, alcoholic beverages to go. So the yeah. applications before you this evening are for on premises consumption only. So if you go to the next slide, great. So this is building A. And as you can see, um, over here in the corner, those are the two new production areas. So there's now a distillery and winery space that have been built out that are 300 square feet each. Under Massachusetts law, the on-premise consumption areas have to be um, adjacent or part of the winery and distillery premises. So you might see in the applications that we're seeking pouring permits for 65 square feet. That's simply so that there is a pouring area for the winery and the distillery. Right next to the where you... Yep. Correct. And so the, the application for the pouring permit for the farmer brewery, the alteration is to remove these areas so that now they, they're exclusively winery and distillery because you can't have them both licensed under those individual per, pouring permits. Kind of technical, but ultimately the 19H, which is the fourth application, allows for pouring throughout the whole premises. So we have to kind of get each approval. And then we have the 19H, which allows for the pouring of uh, farmer brewery, the beer, distilled spirits and the wine throughout the entire premises. So um, in terms, if you go to the next- I'm trying to think, where, where's building A? Like, so uh, that so was a warehouse. Right? This is the warehouse Oh, space. this is the warehouse. Okay, yep, I yep. got it. So yep. that's the cooler. This is building B. So this is where you jump, this is the main entrance where you generally walk in. Oh, okay, go back. back one, yep. And then uh, if you walk- to Oh, there's the hallway. Yeah, I got it. The hallway. Yep. To the right, that will lead to the main, um, the customer journey that will go to building C, which is the next slide. So is that going to be read? Oh, okay. So, uh, so generally you know there's, there's not much in terms of alterations that are happening at this stage. This is really an application for the pouring permits themselves. So the spaces right. are all built out Correct. generally in buildings uh, A and B. Um, and C, the first floor is generally built out. Now, what I will say is in terms, if you go to the um, next slide, just so you can see um, the second, the yep. first floor, if you will, of, of this building, Treehouse is gonna be adding some additional on-premise consumption areas. And the occupancy will still remain the same. Uh, there's, the, we're proposing 525, which is the current occupancy issued by the building inspector, building commissioner. Um, but what we found is that because of COVID, people are still hesitant to congregate in large areas right. together. So the beauty of this is we have these large open spaces that aren't being utilized, yep. which they can be renovated and add additional on-premises consumption areas. So that allows for people to out. spread out a little bit more, yep. feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, yeah. and, and that will um, allow the treehouse to use um, additional spaces that already exist. So there will be likely renovations in the short term to the second and the third floor first mm -hmm. the second floor and then as needed they'll continue to expand but in terms of the the pouring permits we wanted to make sure that we called out those particular areas because those aren't currently utilized right but they will be in the future if people want to Correct. spread out and drink there yeah. and you're still keeping it at the 525 so we're currently keeping at the 525 because trias has seen a, a great reception in terms of customers coming into the space but right now they're they're still working in, in terms of staffing the facility, making mm -hmm. sure they have their sea legs to make sure that they they know how the you know customer journey and how the experience is really going to flow for for the customer. So it's it's at this point in time they're planning to keep the five twenty five because they see that as a a, a decent crowd, but not not to the extent that they can't handle you know right with over staffing. time they're going to continue to adapt their procedures and they can add additional people and then we will return to the select board to request for increases in occupancy but for the time being and for the upcoming summer they see the 525 as as a good number so in terms of the outdoor 
uh, uh, concerts, the upcoming festivities that we've talked about as part of yep. the tourism overlay district. The 525 is going to be sufficient for this particular summer. Get some acts in, really showcase Treehouse's space as this entertainment venue within mm -hmm. the region. Make sure people are aware of its, of, of its location, all the festivities that are, are available. Um, and then next year, really kind of see what they can do better, where they want to add additional where amenities and really build from there. So it's, it's really, um, it, it's the project is, is kind of this, the, the, these additional pouring permits really allow for Treehouse to maximize in terms of its um, uh, alcoholic beverage amenities. But what they'll be doing next year, the years to come is really kind of expanding that particular use. And then we'll have to obviously return to the select board for that. Yeah. Okay, the only reason I asked is, you know, when I was looking at the property, when I walked around the game and convened, uh, you have that large on the second floor open space. Mm, that you could hold yeah. a, sure. a banquet of at least 300 people. Sure, certainly. And, it's, it, you know, I don't know why they're not looking at that. Yeah, so now. yeah, no, certainly. So part of it also is the available on site parking, right? We need to make sure that there's going to be sufficient parking, not just from the zoning bylaw perspective, but from a practical perspective. Right. So okay. Treehouse has engaged traffic engineers that have done traffic counts. So we're really at this point studying, aggregating all of that information and seeing, okay, well, how many additional parking spaces are we going to need? Do we need to build out all these parking spaces? Right. And so at this point, we're seeing, uh, you know, what you know, in terms of customer um, traffic, in terms of different times of the year, mm -hmm. where where we're going to have additional needs, and so from there, Trias will adapt the the site and the use to really fit those uh, those customer needs. Right. Okay. From a board of health point of view, um, we would be supportive of this because we've had discussions about bathroom facilities, and mm -hmm. certainly the five twenty five is um, within that limit, and um, also because of you know, who knows what's happening with COVID, having more ability to spread out, we certainly support better. that because um, people do feel safer with more social distancing. So, uh, you know, we're 100% supportive of that. Yeah. And, and, and if I may, to that, to that point, in terms of the additional toilet rooms, um, that's part of the kind of the general planning process, right? So right. at this point in time, we've, we've met in terms of Trias's architects with the building commissioner. He's evaluated the available toilet rooms. We have sufficient toilet rooms for the 525. So um, as Treehouse uh, determines increases in occupancy, it will then be able to increase the number of toilet rooms accordingly. Yeah. Okay. I think the only other thing that um, we just ask that you coordinate from a security point of view, you just court, can continue to coordinate with our police chief, John Pachork. Certainly, absolutely. I, I don't, I mean, I certainly feel that you have been right along, but that would be one of the um, requirements yeah, was just about to for us going forward always is just to continue to that coordination and um, collaboration that you have already. Absolutely. Can I, um, I was gonna ask um, Alex Castro, did, did you have any comments as you reviewed the applications for on behalf of the town? Um, everything, I mean, for the most part, everything looks in line. This is pretty standard, especially to do it kind of all in one like this. Um, you know, we reviewed with the- Alex, spoke. I'm sorry. Could you just um, speak up a little? Oh. We're having a hard time hearing you. Of course. Um, and, and, and can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we spoke to the ABCC. This is, you know, how, typically how it's done in one big package to, um, you know, allow um, the establishment to pour its, just its spirits, its wine and beer, you know, all over the premises. Um, one question I have for council is um, on the um, alteration of premises application. It says that the applicant already holds a 19CN permit. Is, is that true? Because um, so, so you, you're not, I heard, when I heard you before, I thought you said you're applying for the, the 19C. Um, oh, sorry. So to be clear, we already hold the 19C. Yeah. Okay. The image that I showed at the beginning of the slide deck of that, um, that area where all the chairs were. That yeah current on-premises consumption area. So we already hold the 19CN. And so what we're seeking to do is amend the 19CN to yeah. the winery and the distillery areas because they both can't be licensed. Yeah, and, and then so you could, and then we'll do the 19H. So you, yeah, I mean, um, but yeah, I, I reviewed I, re I reviewed the applications and all supporting documentation. Um, and I'll, I'll also just checked in with the ABCC as the 19H process is gonna be, look a little complicated on its face. Um, everything looks good to me here. Um, I'm happy to answer any other questions the board has. Thank you. Thank you. If, if I may, just procedurally, because the ABCC will ask for this, 
if, if the select board were to grant these particular pouring permits, um, please uh, approve them in, in kind of the order that they yes. they're listed. Okay. The, yeah, the we got that list. Then, then the new pouring permits and the yeah, 19H. For sure. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, excuse me, pardon me, one additional thing. I, I, I spoke with the, the ABCC briefly, and um, they also requested that if, if approved, um, just to attach a memo uh, making clear that it's all for the same establishment, so it all goes to the same investigator, um, just to make the process efficient and for the convenience of the ABCC. Okay. Oh, so, Alex, what you're saying is we need to send a cover letter at requesting um, that it stay together as a package, right? Cor correct, and, and whatever language you seem appropriate, just to let them know that this is all the same establishment, it's all to do with 19H and just, you know, um, just, again, so it goes to the same investigator and you right. know, them all together. Okay. Okay. Well, I would, um, if you guys don't have any more well, questions. Just any public oh. comment on it or is it? Okay. No public. All right. Um, I would then make a motion to, um, do you want me to, yeah, oh, you want to, read, the you want to read them? Okay, yeah. so um, so I make a motion to grant uh, the section 19B and farmer uh, farmer winery pouring permit. No, we, we need to oh, amend well, this first. this is the order. Yeah. Sorry. Right? Well, no. Alex has written you the order for that, so do them in that order and take yeah. Separate. Right. Take the separate votes, right, Alex? Right. So the first yeah, 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 yeah. The, the ABCC said we should just do separate votes for all of them in the order council recommended. So it should be the amendment. Then we should. So we the amendment first. The amendment one yes. first. Yeah, you start with the amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I on the wrong page? You have to start with number one. Well, that's where I was. I typed. You have to amend yeah, the, the farmer brewery pouring store. permit. Yeah, they have Oh, I didn't see. Oh, okay, section, got it. Section 19H pouring permit and alteration of premises votes. So, maybe so, so the alteration, so the alteration of the 19C would be would be the first to be approved, then 19B, 19E, and then the 19H, because you have to have the 19B and C and this 19E here? before you can have the 19H. Yeah, the, the 19H should go last. This here, this, this, then this. Got it. Yes. C N. So make uh, a motion for the alteration to the premises licensed under 19 C, section 19 C N. Do you have a second on that? I will second that. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Chair McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfman. Then I'll make a motion um, uh, to approve under section 19 B N farmer winery pouring permit. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Aye Carolyn. Aye, Chair McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfman. Under section 19 E O, uh, farmer distillery pouring permit. I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Chair McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfman. And then finally, under section 19H, uh, pouring permit um, and the accompanying alterations of the premises. I will second that. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you for driving all the way out here. Oh, no. And I also Council. certainly uh, help facilitate with the ABCC. I have to thank you for the light reading. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the ABCC's pro uh, policy we procedure. All had it was piles. <laughs> and it's it's generally similar information, so it's unfortunate, yeah, right. but it, that's what's required. And so uh, we'll work with the investigators to make sure that this gets approved uh, in short order by the by the state. So thank you all again for your time. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank have you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you, Damian. Thank you, Damian. Thank you, everybody. Yep, I appreciate it. Thanks, Alex. Pleasure. Got a little bit of time. Okay. Uh, discussion items. Yeah, I'll back to those. We yes. have anything yet? You do. Oh, yay! You do. The first lead. 
I want it. I do. I do. I'm going to start tearing it apart. No one tearing it apart. All right. Thank you. Oh, this is the same thing. I got another one here. I think so. Yeah. I gave you one, but it didn't finish copying everything. So I think we're good. Yeah. Here, I'll give you one. You guys have a copy? Oh, Carolyn needs one here. She can have this one. Yeah, I don't think I have one. All right. I ran out of paper and copy. Was who was saw Treehouse's fault? No, 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 no. It wasn't <laughs> it's anybody's fault. It's paper. just a bunch of things happened all at once. So <laughs> essentially, and these these things could change, but what you're looking at, and it's not in any form that I really want to show other people. Um, <laughs> it's all right. We got a little time because it's a little couple days. It's it's the the first real version of a warrant, but it gives you an idea of what you have. And so the first article, and I'm going to try to do it as a consent article with the with some discussion with counsel and the moderator, but we've done it twice before, and that is doing the reports to officers, elected mm -hmm. officials compensation, the acknowledgement of gifts, the library interest vote, acceptance of grants, and contract authority signatures for both the assessors and the select board. Can the only thing I would, I mean, I just would wonder if. Um... I, I, I would like to separate out the acknowledgments of gifts because it, you know, it just gives us some time to thank each, right? I mean, we just well, we put an them. entire table in there of I know. all the gifts outlined. <coughs> yeah, it's listed out separately. It's listed out separately, like we've done it, and we did. We gave them a lot of detail. Okay, I just um, just didn't want it lost we, in that. Do we know the article on the July twenty first? I mean, July twenty one storm. Um, do we know how much money we're going to It's about 90000 that needs to come out of free cash. There was a letter from yeah, Joe Comerford's Joe office Joe Comerford's today. supposed to be getting us the, you know. Well, she sent a thing today that she was pressuring the, um, well, she, the committee, but it's she has not no a done answer deal. yet. It's not a done it's deal. It's not a done like they deal. Voted it. Well, they, I think they voted to do it, but they have not voted how they're going to disperse it. And and then they had a meeting again well, so today. So they voted the seven and a half million. Right, but whether what what we're going to get and how they're dispersing it and when has not been voted yet. All right. So I think we're um, at least that was the email from Elena today was that hey we want to well, let you know we're still trying here, don't have an answer yet. The ninety thousand is not a correct number. It, I mean, really yes, it is. It's what well, we it's spent what, to date based on that July storm. But whether they'll give it to us or not is not. I know, but. What are you saying? Not correct. Well, That's what's been expended. The river, the, river, the river road damage is over a million dollars. Oh, yeah. That, but yeah. that hasn't been expended. What you're asking, what we're asking you to cover is the amount it's of money that's just right. what's been expended to. If we vote this and we find out that we get reimbursed, say, 120000 what happens? It goes into the general fund and into free cash. Okay. All right. Yeah, but then that we can use the free cash. So. It until it's certified then, maybe i think right hopefully i would hope we would, I, I would know would... by june by june oh well, by we june were, i was we... talking by april no i want to pull the yeah, i want to table this so it doesn't go into free cash so we don't expend the ninety thousand if we have any ability because otherwise that ninety thousand is and we can't we we it's appropriated and we can't spend the whatever we get from joe until it's a certified so it's not available right away so mm -hmm. the thing we have to do is figure out what has to happen at the end of the fiscal year. If we have to cover this bill by the end of the fiscal year, you have to fund it. All right. Yeah, so the true. reason it's in there is because this is, you know, no, Brenda I and I going through and, and figuring I, I out understand. what we need to I have. I, I hear what you're saying, I'm but let's worried. leave it in there. You can always table it if we know more. Okay. Right. Um, okay. You will have to take winter snow and ice expenditures out of free cash because we don't have the ability to do a transfer in the reserve fund like we did last year because we've spent we we may not be able to cover all the other transfers that might come in so and this is actually put she's got this in the budget she's got an estimate right now in the budget reports so doesn't include today no it does not include today um all right so you have you'll see an article and it may require two articles so it says consent article but we'll switch that and that is the proceeds from the sale of real property 
the proceeds from the sale of real property would relate to the Oxford property sale. Mm -hmm. So if we get that amount in, we would need what we would want town meeting to do is vote to use whatever we receive in the sale of the property to pay down the ban right. that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I this is I just cribbed this from another town meeting warrant. So I definitely will want Lisa to go through it, but at okay. least she knows we're asking to do this. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the rest of these in the next couple pages are boilerplate articles that we have, and we've got them in the order we've been doing them before mm -hmm. in the previous years. So you'll see that we've got the class comp plan, the omnibus budget, the sewer wastewater treatment plant fund, SCEMS, capital, community preservation fund, Smith Volk funding. I have, we can replace, like we can place that in a different spot if you yep. want to. Yep. I do have an article because we are not finished with contract negotiations for the two collective bargaining agreements. Right now I have an article that has a, a request to set aside a sum right. to settle those two contracts. Okay. Um, now this is this, and again, placement we can fiddle with, yeah. but the next two articles relate to the foster care transportation that we had discussed earlier. Yeah. So in the Set first one, up. I do the creation of the revolving fund. In the second one, we mentioned the MOU. I will wait to hear from council as to how she thinks we should do that. Okay. And, you know, if we don't need the second one, that's fine. But I think the other, at least one of the other communities is going to reference the MOU in their warrant. So we'll talk to Lisa and see what she says. I think we can skip that Tilton one because we're not going to go for the estimate. Well, right? the thing is, is CIPC has not voted formally. We'll have more information by next week, but I did put it in as a placeholder, which was the request of Candace in yeah. an email earlier this I week. Think, and, and her request was because we were all asking for an updated number, but then when we realized it was going to be well, About actually, thousand. she got it. She had a conversation. I didn't print her email out, but she did have a conversation with the group that she's working with, and they may want to see an estimate. It's up to capital. So she did submit yeah, a capital a application. It was 25 grand. Right. So she submitted an additional capital application for that amount, and it's been forwarded to capital. It's included in my revisions for the report, but the report isn't final. Mm -hmm. So I haven't sent it out yet. I, I sent that, and I will send some other information. I, I think it's... I think we need to be really clear that we have only $55,000 difference between what's already been proposed and in our budget. And all these capital requests. And all the re capital requests. So, so there is no money. There is no money. <laughs> there is no money. Yes, we know that. We will, okay. we will be able to talk about that as, as a larger group next week. I know. But so the next article relates to a personnel, creating a personnel manual and extracting the benefits discussions and the mm -hmm. benefits details in our bylaws and pulling them into a manual. Yep. And so this is just a first shot at this and it identifies certain things. We maintain certain things. So you'll note it starts from article two in the policies yep. and it outlines specific things like holding public meetings and hearings before changes, notifications to, mm -hmm. the, to the select board, working when when the personnel board works on these questions and so we can flush through it a bit and obviously we would have to have a hearing on it if we're going to get that far mm -hmm. the problem is is there have been so many there's been a lot of other questions that have come before the personnel board i've added it, it as a placeholder we may not have the time yeah, to finish it so it may have to be in, a, in the fall. The issue with that, and I've been clear with them and I will be clear with you, is every single time we run into a problem that is not identified in that bylaw, we have to be very careful and consult with council about yeah. to how to deal with it. Right. Because the bylaw itself is too old. It's only, the only additions you've had have been changes to personnel benefits, but not necessarily adding some of the elements of state and federal law that have right. become it's all, it's necessary. Outdated. It's okay. outdated. So it is outdated. I think the finance, at least one member of the finance committee is not going to be in favor of this, but functionally in order for us to better serve not only the community, but the employees, yeah. we need the flexibility to be able to, yep. to work within the newer legal requirements. Okay. So, I have another placeholder there and it's just, I haven't fiddled with it again. This is pretty, yeah. this is pretty um, drafty. The, we then have the article to separate the town clerk 
collect or treasure a position. Right. And so there's more than one way to do this. Um, I have a couple of options. I put the second one in that I got from council and that creates a, it separates the town clerk from the treasure collector. It allows us to hire there's two different ways you can do it. You can do it where you can hire individually for each position, or you could do, in this case, hire a treasurer and a collector as the same person. Um, but if essentially it, and I sent an email out to Natalie and Joe about this, it essentially asked the legislature to take that general court vote to allow us to split the job so that we can right. better manage right. um, administratively here, which we've discussed in past meetings. Yep. Okay. So after that, there was a request made by the police chief on seeing right, if we can accept the provisions of general laws, chapter 90, section 17 C, which allows the select board to establish a speed limit of 25 miles per hour in any thickly settled or business district in the town that is not a state highway or take any action relative there too. So this is a request from John. I've added it. Okay. Um, and there's well, he a was, he's, he's, he's been asked to do this. he's been asked by by residents that, about uh, this in particular areas and we've had this request i know most notably from a resident that now lives down the street from me on the other side of the line um for river road so it's it, it comes at a time which may be useful for the board to support this article and i think john would ask you to I, I don't want to put too many words in his mouth, but okay. Um, marijuana, we don't know. What's we don't know. So we, with them we had a question outstanding. I just have a placeholder for it. Now there's two citizens petitions we could be looking at, and Lori Busada is actually here. She missed public comment, but what I will let you know is there's a citizens petition that somebody has asked me about regarding. And I don't want to, I don't want to mess this up, Lori, but essentially without public comment open, I can give a brief. We will probably see a citizen's petition to ask Deerfield in a non-binding article to support changes to the state flag to okay. better, it's related to indigenous peoples. Okay. So and, uh, there are several other communities, there's Lori, there are several other communities that have begun working on this as a group in Franklin County mm -hmm. and Deerfield hadn't put this article on. We haven't seen the petition. I've only had one conversation okay. and Lori and I were emailing about it earlier today and I'd given her an estimated time for public comment, but public comment went much faster than we thought it was gonna do, Lori. So just know that Lori and other citizens of Deerfield will probably bring us a petition to be included on the warrant. Okay they will have to go through the certified the certification process but i did put a placeholder so that we could add that article okay and so that's what we have right now um there's other articles that i need to add right. so i'm i'm going through a list i keep a list in that particular folder okay so the, i'm sure there's other things that we're going to want to flesh out like <laughs> the budget but and and I will say that it would be helpful if we could add, do what we've done in the past and add some more information into the warrant whenever we can, because it helps oh, yeah. residents Absolutely. see it's what complex. things. And yep. if you want to go back and revisit the question of breaking out specific articles, that's definitely a valid question. I think we have, we have a complicated we have a complicated warrant this year, so I think we need to have. I think we have to have an informational night. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. So uh, I would I would want us to start planning for that, and I'll get some help from staff around that. Last time, something bit us with a, a consent article last time, and I just felt like it didn't. We had to then like we lost all this stuff. It had maybe it was had to do with paying bills. It was paying like older that. bills, so and so one thing this year, but. we don't have. Well, we have. I have a consent article for two things. We could break them out, and that's for the winter storm and July expenses. Right. Those are fiscal 22 expenditures, but they're both to be essentially at this point funded through free cash if, if we don't table it. We could break those out. I, just feel like I would, any, I would any like financial. to break them out in, yeah. in case, Anything financial. Right, right up until the end, we could table them if necessary because, I mean, we would, the financial. winter 
winter costs are going to be over no matter what. But mm -hmm. I'm talking about the storm reimbursement. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm still hoping we're going to get enough money from that, and then it just goes in the general fund, and we wouldn't have to wait. I, I just don't want to tie up money if we don't have to, because mm -hmm. we don't have any extra money. I realize that, but without any idea, and she doesn't even know what we have for expenses. Right now, we have an estimate of about $90,000 if no other bill comes through, Brenda and I. And winter storm and ice, we won't know until much closer to town meeting. Well, I'm, I'm going to try to um, get the river road under that one Long Island Sound in Michigan, the R R uh, ROTC, um, you know, that just came out. Uh, okay. I know that I sent you that information. On. I, okay. I I don't know what else we're gonna do, you know, because it's 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 so I mean it's it's well over a million dollars from one or the other. Oh, absolutely. But we aren't at any place where it's shovel ready. That's part of the issue. So you when we don't have the money, unless we tap other sources, we don't have this even in a request because we weren't there close enough to really think about a capital article. The Long Island Sound Initiative will let us, well, we could we could approach it either um, a design under 319 and then an implementation under 319 is a two year fix. I think we can get some design money if we wanna put in design money and go to the Long Island Sound Initiative. So I, you know, we just got to see what's the best deal for us, the least amount of money that we have to come up with. And so one thing I would say is we need to make sure that we're not competing for 319 grants, because as we've talked about in Casey, previous group, so in previous money. meetings, there's additional $50 million in that fund and they can't even spend what they have already normal year. We can help them. Yeah, so we can certainly help them, but we got to have the seed we money to get there. We yeah. wouldn't be competing against ourselves. If we, we can do the bloody book and we can do the road both. And, um, so really, we need to tighten that up, and it's a grant process that adds to the workload. So we need to know what it is we're going to well, do. We, we would go through the per cog, probably. So what would be or, good is if we have a grant or, brief. Or the Franklin Conservation District. We have to see, because Kimberly only has so much staff time herself. Exactly. But we do have some flexibility on the Conservation District to, um, because the 319 gives you 10% admin costs and that we could afford then to have our admin person um, manage the grant. So you would not have to do it either under the 319 or under the Long Island Sound. So either way. Yeah, if we can get that administrative support and the grant writing services, that would help. And Kimberly. Yep, but if she, she usually capacity, does that. Then we can go through the conservation district. Okay, so we need well, what needs to happen, Carolyn, is it's got to be settled so we can go looking for that. And the issue for me is we've got to find the time to do that well, because you and I are both in meetings at least half the day. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I haven't worked out the, the math, what would be the most attractive one. Yeah. But there is funding in both of them right now. Okay. So that's, you know, that's good information for the rest of the board to consider. Um, so this is where we are right now in terms of the warrant. We, you guys can make some changes once we have it a little bit more fleshed out. And I do know that the finance committee, at least one member is clamoring to see what this warrant looks like. It does have to be closed by March 25th. So your next regularly scheduled meeting is the 23rd. What I would ask the board to consider is consider having a Friday meeting if necessary on the 25th if anything comes up that I need you guys to work on. Okay. I I will try my best to get that tightened up between now and then. But again, it it also depends on how much communication happens between us us meeting staff. Uh, well, can we just set a time then on the 25th cuz I have from 9 to 12:30 I'm on uh, doing an MMA um, nomination committee meeting. So I, I have the afternoon available, but not the morning. I'm already committed in the morning. So if we could set a time. And that's a hard day anyway for David, but. Well, we could, Trevor and I could just meet David as long as he. Yeah, David can tell me if he's got some issues, but yeah. and I can bring him to the table. Because you only need a quorum to vote. So 
but I can't do it in the morning call. phase. Just kind of give yeah. me a call in like I did on Monday, just kind of give my suggestions on the yeah. capital projects and priorities. That makes sense too. Mm -hmm. Because if we do a, a hybrid or a remote meeting, then you all can have that conversation. I just want to make sure that we cover our bases. Yep. No, I'm fine. I just want to set a time because I'm already committed from 9 to 1230. So what would you like to do in the afternoon for a time? I'm, I'm after 1230, I'm free. If we're going to have it in person, if On you need a quorum here in person, then I just Later need... the better for me, but... So do you want to do it like three o'clock? Oh yeah, that's fine. I just and need do you want to do minutes. it remote? Because usually, I my question is, do you want to meet in person or do you want to do it remote? What's the context of the meeting? It would be to discuss any other items that we would need to add to the warrant. Oh yeah. Before the closure, because okay. thirty days is the closure date. Closing it forever. Okay. So I don't. Yeah, care if you if needed to. It, I just needed fifteen minutes to get here. If we had to be. Um, yep. So in it's up. Person. You just need to tell me whether you want to do in person, and if you want hybrid, you know yeah. that's just a planning exercise yeah. for us. We could do it in person here. Yeah, I, I don't care as long well, as it's. Or we could just do Zoom. Why not? We just do. Zoom? All right, because then one. nobody has to travel, and David can call in if he wants. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we'll do a Zoom on the twenty fifth. Yeah, at that's three o'clock. Three o'clock is fine. So you are getting close to your next hearing, yes, um, which is at 7.15. So I still got three minutes. Yeah. What else do we have on that? What's that? What else do we have on the agenda we can knock out? Um, I did give you guys, and I wasn't able to get this out in the, the packet, but I did give you two of the capital requests that I've revised. Yep. And so if you want to take a look at that. I saw, uh, well, at least for the sewer, I saw that request and I know I helped you. We, we talked about those numbers. Yeah, Trevor helped me with the capital request yesterday. So you'll see there's two of them. The first one is the Senior Center Grammar School. And it's revised to include some more of the information that Julie pulled together in the CPC application. Mm -hmm. But for the wastewater treatment plant upgrades, Trevor and I went through the cost estimate, the correct one. <laughs> yep. And estimated the amount for 2223 at 16 million 41. 105. 105. Thank yep. you. Because that, that is the amount that we've um, currently contracted yeah, for. Currently contracted. And then the. Um, the 547516, $5,470,516 is the phase two base bid and alternates bid. Each at about two point seven million. So and, it brings and, your costs almost to twenty two million in total. Right. And we've got the nineteen million we've already got appropriated. So the balance is the two point seven million in alternates that we feel is important to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so we need this on the capital plan, and then we would need to come to the residents and ask if they want to do this. And then the, the decision is: do we want to? Originally, we were talking about just using that. Uh, town money to, per se, not going for grants to finish out whatever's left at South Deerfield. But the, the last conversation with finance committee, our working group and some finance committee members were to um, to apply for, to group in that work with the work at Old Deerfield and, and ask for a, you know, a, a one large um, appropriation to do everything. Um, and get all that, you know, get grant money on the whole thing from USDA, but that's up to this board to discuss at a later date. The whole point right now is just to get the initial stuff. This on. doesn't. This doesn't include the two million for the effluent pipe. No, no. The is effluent it? pipe is actually estimated at six point nine, I think. The that's why the, I asked him. <laughs> climate resiliency, all that all climate that resiliency, resiliency work. Was like six something down there. We were yeah. holding off on that. I, I thought that was two. Well, maybe the pipe itself. The effluent pipe, pipe itself is about two, we but there's the walls, other measures. All the other stuff was six, you know, total of six. Oh. So we were, we were not going to include that in a capital project this year because we don't have the money for it unless we end up getting a grant. Well, but, um, we were 
we're gonna we were gonna put two million request two million under MVP. Mm -hmm. Do do we still want to do that just in case? I, I don't know. I mean, Joe and Natalie could you know put it in and let them know. So it's in the information that we forwarded to Joe and Natalie that Denise and I have been working on, mostly Denise. The only but we, you guys have a hearing starting, so we can yeah, go back and we'll talk back. about okay. it later. Okay. I, I just sounds good. I think we should put it in for what the heck. I mean, we might fund it. Um, okay. We'll talk about that after. But I'm, I, how did I miss it? So I, I, I will, I'll get, I'll get with you and uh, talk okay. to the charter stuff again. I was going to say, I'm not it's really too attached. excited about this. If it's six million, I thought it was just two million. Mm -hmm. There's oh. other elements. It can, it could, you know, we could spend money. Forever. The charts attached to that <laughs> revision. It never ends. All right. Oh it never God. ends. I can't keep up. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. Yep. All set. So, on the matter of the Tavern Sports <coughs> Bar, located at two Elm Street, South Deerfield, Massachusetts, uh, please be advised that on um, March 9th, 2022 at 7:15, the Deerfield Select Board, sitting as the local licensing authority, will conduct a hearing in a hybrid fashion, with with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in the Deerfield Municipal Offices located at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. 01373, pursuant with provisions of General Law. Chapter 138, Section 64, to determine whether the Tavern Sports Bar, the holder of a license issued pursuant to General Law Chapter 138, Section 12, to conduct business at the premises located at 2C Elm Street in South Deerfield, has violated the provisions of said Chapter 138, any rules and regulations from there under, or any of the town of Deerfield's regulations governing alcohol licenses. And if such violations are found to be have occurred, whether such licenses should be modified, suspended or revoked in accordance with the uh, Mass General Law, chapter 138, section 23. Subjects to be discussed at the hearing includes the following alleged violations of the conditions placed on the license, whether on or about January 21st, 2022, the club violated the provisions of General Law, <clears throat> Chapter 138, Subsection 64A and 69, by improperly serving alcohol to an intoxicated person. I opened the meeting uh, prior to beginning offering any evidence. I ask that if there is anyone here who will be presenting evidence to the board to stand and raise their right hand and repeat after me. Okay. I, state your name. I, Timothy Baldrige. Um, can you, could you I, guys? Patrizzi. Okay. Nick Aldrich. Thank you. Okay. okay. Swear that the testimony I am about to provide is the whole truth. Where that the testimony that I am about to provide is the whole truth. Where that the testimony I'm about to provide is the whole truth. Where the testimony I'm provide is the whole truth. This hearing is now open. Thank you. Yes. Tavern Sports Bar contests the allegations contained in this notice, that is, it disputes that it sold alcoholic beverages to intoxicated patients, as alleged. For the purposes of moving forward, I would request town council to present the matters before us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Brian Winter from Mead Tallerman and Costa, town council's office, and with me this evening is attorney Elizabeth Blyden. Uh, I just wanted to report before we get going that I'm having a, a very difficult time hearing the members at the board. Um, I, I've turned up my volume as much as I, I can, and I'll do my best to hear you, but um, at times I may ask you to, to repeat yourself if I miss something. So uh, forgive me, but uh, bear with me. I'll do my best. We'll do ours too. Thank you. 
Um, and Mr. Chairman, would it be helpful before um, we begin if I just provided, you know, sort of a two or three sentence overview of, of uh, the proceedings this evening, just to provide a little structure, or um, I can just jump right in, whatever your pleasure might be. Oh, that would be great. That would be fine. If you okay, so I'll, I'll be very brief. I know you have um, a significant agenda tonight. Um, so this is a a liquor license hearing on discipline pursuant to a statute and it's a, an adjudicatory hearing meaning that the licensing um, authority which is the three of you are now serving essentially as as the judges and jury and um, although I, I hate to refer to myself this way I'm essentially uh, not only representing the board but I'm also a prosecutor uh, on behalf of the board so what you're going to hear is is uh, essentially uh, a mini trial. Uh, I'm going to call a witness. I'm going to ask the witness some questions and you'll hear some evidence. The representatives of the tavern will be allowed to ask that witness questions and look at any documents that the witness provides. Um, then they can provide their own testimony and evidence and then I can ask them questions and at the uh, end of that evidence I'll ask you to take a motion to, to close the hearing and then we'll move into a, a deliberative phase and the deliberative phase is really twofold. Once it gets back to the board, you're essentially acting as the judge and jurors. And I'm gonna ask you to first find the facts um, when the facts are you know, uh, based on the record that you've gathered tonight, the evidence you've gathered tonight. Um, and you'll have to determine whether or not those facts support the elements of a violation. And then the second portion of that, if you find that a violation or violations occurred, is to determine what the appropriate sanction is. So when we get to that point, I'll take off my prosecutor's hat, if you will, and I will uh, return as your counsel and uh, provide some guidance and some, uh, some parameters on how to make those decisions. So we're not there yet, but when we get there um, and the public hearing is closed, I'll provide some, uh, some assistance on um, how to guide you through that part of the process. So that's um, how we'll proceed in a nutshell. Um, you're welcome, of course, to ask questions too. Uh, I'm acting as your representative and, and sort of, if you will, um, leading uh, the proceedings uh, on your behalf, but you're certainly welcome to ask questions as well. Uh, at the end of the day, you are the licensing authority and certainly not me. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, um, I'm happy to proceed and I'd like to call our first witness. Okay, thank you. Uh, Officer Bowen, are you present? I am. Um, Officer Bowen, would you please uh, introduce yourself to the board, stating your first name and last name and spelling your last name, if you don't mind, just for the record? Yes, uh, my name is Officer Timothy Boland, B-O-L-A-N-D. And Officer Boland, uh, how are you employed, sir? I'm employed as a uh, police officer with the Deerfield Police Department. I'm also uh, assigned to the Northwestern District Attorney's Anti-Crime Task Force. And with respect to your relationship, employment relationship with the Deerfield Police Department. How long have you uh, served in total with the Deerfield Police Department? Uh, about three and a half years. And how long have you served in your current position? Um, for about seven months. And with respect to your other responsibilities, how long have you served in that role? Are you um, referring to the, the task force? Yes. I'm sorry, that's um, seven months. Um, I've been a full-time officer here for about just shy of three years. Okay. And just um, in summary form, could you describe some of your um, responsibilities as officer of the police department? Uh, yes, they're wide ranging. Uh, anything from traffic enforcement uh, to responding to medical calls, uh, responding to other emergency calls for service uh, regarding robberies, domestic violence, break and entering, um, assault and batteries, uh, disorderly conducts, uh, so on. And in that context, are you familiar with the department's practice, procedures, and protocols for receiving um, phone calls about incidences and responding to those? I am. Okay. Uh, now, I want to just switch gears here. Uh, thank you for that summary and um, start to talk about the tavern. Uh, are you familiar with the tavern sports bar? I am, yes. In your professional capacity, I mean that. I understood you you knew that. 
Yes. Um, and without going into any specifics, is the Tavern Sports Bar a, a facility or an establishment in town that's familiar to you and or the department? Uh, very much so. Okay. Now, I want to get specifically into uh, the matter before the board tonight. So I'm going to direct your attention to January 22nd, 2022. Was there any occasion for you on that date to receive a report concerning the tavern? Um, yes, there was. Okay, and as a res or how did that arise? Was it a telephone call? Was it on site, in person? Uh, it was a telephone call, and then uh, an on site, in person interview. And as a result of that telephone call, did you generate a narrative or a report? Yes, I did. And do you have that report with you? I do. And has that report been submitted to the board already? It has. Okay. Um, now I'm going to ask you um, a couple questions about the report and then just ask you to summarize it. But are you familiar with it as you sit here today? I am, yes. Okay. And uh, you understand from your experience in the department the importance of, of being complete and accurate and truthful in generating these reports? Yes, I do. And you signed this yourself? I did. And having reviewed it for tonight, is there anything you wish to change, correct, or clarify with respect to the report? No. Okay. And uh, if you would, could you walk the board through the substance of that report? What is the content of that report? Yes. Yeah, so um, the substance of the report, I, I took a call from a concerned party uh, who wished to speak about an incident that had happened uh, the evening prior. Um, she had intimate knowledge of this and uh, uh, the individual involved. Um, she felt that her uh, son had been grossly overserved uh, alcoholic beverages leading to uh, eventually his arrest. Um, I told her she could come in and speak to me if she would like and she agreed so we met at the Deerfield Police Department. Uh, while at the Deerfield Police Department, uh, she informed me that she lives in close proximity um, that uh, her son had gone to the tavern, uh, had intended to be there for a short period of time. Um, after about 30 minutes or so, um, she contacted him. Uh, he had not returned. Uh, in, in summary, she had gone over there, uh, attempted to retrieve her son, um, where a physical altercation took place, where um, she was shoved twice and uh, was seen uh, the involved party was seen taking a shot of a, an assumed alcoholic beverage with bartender uh, Dan McRyan and several other individuals at the bar. Um, approximately two hours after that incident um, came the an arrest um, where um, Mr. Reed was arrested for uh, a slew of charges, I believe, including two counts of assault and battery on police, uh, as well as I think disorderly conduct. I have that report if you'd like me to review the exact charges. Um, in just a moment, if you don't mind, I just had a couple questions about your narrative. Um, so the caller, um, this woman, um, and I'm referring to the first page of your narrative um, close to the top, uh, she reported that approximately 6 p.m. her son went to the bar. Am I reading that accurately? Um, yes, you are. And then this incident uh, that you described, I think, is a pushing kind of incident that occurred around 730. That is correct. And then uh, this concluded, I think she reported, and now I'm at the bottom of page one, around 930, it says approximately. Yes. So if I'm doing my math correctly, he... The gentleman in question was at the bar from 6 to 7.30. That's uh, an hour and a half and then uh, another two hours. So about three, three and a half hours there. That's correct. Okay. And on the second page, um, it's the, the last sentence of your report. And I'll just read it and just tell me if I'm reading this correctly, please. I later observed video evidence from inside of the tavern sports bar, which corroborated Ms. I'll just leave her name out, even though it's in the report statements. Um, did I read that accurately? Yes, you did. Could you explain to the board um, what you're referring to when you refer to video evidence? 
Uh, yes, uh, video was requested um, pertaining to that particular incident at that time, which was provided um, by, I believe, Mr. Patrizzi. Um, and that shows um, what I described and what my report describes. Okay, and you reviewed this video. That's correct. And you know, based on your experiences and your expertise as a, an officer of the police department, did you make any observations or have any impressions having watched that video? I did, yes. And what were those or what are those? Uh, well, it had appeared that uh, in the video um, that well, first an assault uh, and battery took place um, a domestic assault and battery. Uh, secondly, um, after that, uh, the individual involved uh, was then consuming alcohol beverages uh, with staff. And, and uh, was it evident on the video where those alcoholic beverages came from? Uh, from behind the bar. Okay. So he was served those beverages, not to put words in your mouth, but... Correct. Okay. Um, is it your understanding that this is um, security camera footage or video that the establishment maintains? That's correct. And did they just uh, allow you to view it on the premises or were you provided an actual hard copy of this or, or digital copy, I should say? We were provided a digital copy. And do you um, maintain that copy in the department now? I do. Did you bring a copy with you this evening? I brought two. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm not gonna ask that it be played and I don't know if we have the ability to do that or not, but I would ask um, just as an evidentiary matter that the board receive that. I don't think it's part of your file. Um, I Hopefully uh, if we do have two copies, we can provide another copy um, to the representatives of the establishment so that everybody has a copy, but I would like it noted for the, the record. Uh, yes, I can do that. Terrific, thank you. Um, now, going back to um, the other narratives, and I believe there are two, one provided by an officer, Capuano, another by an officer, uh, Fitzgerald. Are you familiar with those reports? I am, yes. Um, have you spoken with either officer about them? Uh, I did um, at the, around the time it occurred. Okay. And have you reviewed those reports in their entirety? Uh, yes, I have. And having read those reports, uh, what's your understanding of the, the substance of um, their narratives? Uh, they were alerted to uh, a, an unruly individual uh, within the bar. Um, he was intoxicated. Uh, and tumultuous. Um, he fought with uh, tavern staff as well as the police for um, several minutes uh, until he was taken into custody and removed from the establishment. And um, the officer Capuano's report, is that consistent or inconsistent with what you uh, saw in the security video? That's uh, consistent. And with respect to Officer Fitzgerald's report, same question, was that consistent or inconsistent with what you observed in the video? Well, that, that is consistent to the uh, video that was logged into evidence as part of their report. Uh, the, the video that I have is uh, only for um, 22DRF18OF. Um, there is video uh, pertaining to Officer Capuano and Officer Fitzgerald's report. Um, I do not have that with me, but I can make that available. Okay, understood. And you referenced um, uh, a narrative report number, the 22 DRF 18 OF. That's the reference number for your report. That's correct. Okay, just wanted that to be clear on the record. And the security um, recording that you have, is it uh, time stamped? Do you have a sense of uh, how long that video was and when it began and when it ended? Um, I, I can't recall exactly if it is timestamped, but um, it's probably about uh, a minute long. Uh, okay. And that the minute that was recorded, or at least that you were provided and observed, um, 
How does that correspond to the events in your report? Which minute did you watch? Uh, that corresponded with, um, sorry, pardon me. The, uh, the reporting party, if you will, um, entering the establishment um, with the intent to retrieve her son, uh, her being shoved and then um, the party consuming alcoholic beverages with uh, staff. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, just before I conclude um, with you, uh, Officer Bowen, I just wanted to note for the record, um, the notice of this hearing, it's just the one other piece of evidence I wanted to have the board recognize, uh, dated February 18th, 2022. I know you already have it in your record because you recited it at the opening of the hearing, um, but just as we're marking what I'll refer to as exhibits, um, I just like that noted as well. Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Chairman, uh, that's all the questions I have right now for Mr. Bowen, or Officer Bowen, excuse me. Um, so. Uh, because this is an adjudicatory hearing, um, before we proceed with the respondents' evidence and testimony, they do have an opportunity, as, as the board does, to ask Officer Bowen any questions. So uh, I would um, ask the board members first, uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, if the board members have any questions of Officer Bowen. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, so through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, um, Mr. Bowen, did the video that you have, you say it's about a minute or so long, is it, is it cut so that it um, shows her coming, uh, the person coming in, being assaulted, and then later on drinking, or is it all in the same kind of time frame? Uh, it's, it's just a, a video clip of that particular incident. Um, that occurred at approximately 7.30 p.m. Yep. Uh, where she enters the establishment, um, shots are taken, she's assaulted, and then she is shoved out of the bar, um, gotcha. and then he returns to his seat. Okay, thank you. And the reason you only have that part of the video is because of the subsequent complaint from the mother the next morning. Or the next that's day. correct, yes. Yeah, that's, that would so be why I have that, that clip, part. yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if there aren't any further questions from the board, I don't want to cut anybody off. Um, but if you don't have any other questions for Officer Bolin, then I would ask that you recognize um, the tavern and ask if they have any questions for Officer Bolin. Um, could you identify yourself before you? Um, ask the question. My name is Christy Bodine. I'm an attorney with Curtis Carey, Gates and Goodridge in Greenfield, and I represent the tavern. Next to me are Robert Patrizzi, who is the owner of the tavern, and Nick uh, Aldrich, who's a, a bouncer at the tavern, who was there on the night in question. Um, first of all, we were not provided with copies of the reports from Officer Capuano, nor were we provided with copies of the report from Officer Fitzgerald, nor were we provided with copies of the video that they were provided. We also asked the police department, Mr. Patrizzi asked the police department if he could get copies of the statements that were given to the police by his staff. We were not provided those. So I really don't feel completely prepared right now to defend my client's position, missing that information and not having had time to review it. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, um, Officer Bowen, you didn't subpoena this video, did you? I did not, no. Um, th this video was voluntarily provided to you, wasn't it? It was. Did you know it existed before it was provided to you? Um, yes, when I was, well, I knew that there was um, camera footage. Uh, how, how did you possibly, know that? Uh, because I know that the inside of the tavern has video camera um, surveillance. But did, did you know of your own knowledge that the cameras were on and working? No, I didn't. Okay. How did you learn that? Uh, it was asked to Mr. Patrizzi. You asked him if he had video? I personally did not know. Did he tell you he had to do volunteer that information? Uh, I can't recall if he did. Um, did he offer you any more information other than that video? Uh, no. 
Um, was he cooperative with you when you spoke to him? Uh, I don't, I didn't speak to him regarding anything further. Okay. Um, so you don't have video other than uh, the uh, complainant's um, narrative story to you during your interview. You don't have any independent uh, evidence of anything that happened after the time that that video that's shown on the video, is that correct? Um, here, correct, other than obviously that report yeah. um, and then video, uh, no. So you don't have any independent knowledge about whether or not um, Mr. Reed was served any alcoholic beverages beyond what that was shown on that one video, is that correct? Uh, that and then statements made by, in the report by officers uh, and then individuals reported to them. But there were no officers in the tavern between 7.30 and 9.30 p.m., is that correct? That is correct. And do you have any video from inside the tavern between 7.30 and 9.30 p.m.? Uh, other than what I have here with me, uh, no, not here. Okay. And that video covers a short period of time between 7.30 and just a couple of minutes between the time that, that the complainant came into the bar and, and then uh, you observed on the video a shot being taken by the by her son? That's correct. Um, does the video show him drinking multiple al alcoholic beverages? Uh, no, I believe it's just the one. It shows him drinking something that you don't even really know whether that's an alcoholic beverage. I couldn't uh, definitively say whether it was or wasn't. And did you see anyone else drinking a shot at the, um, at the same time as this uh, as the fellow who was arrested? Uh, yes, there were several individuals uh, also taking shots. I, I don't know who they are. You didn't identify yes. them? No. You didn't attempt to identify them? Uh, no. You didn't ask them to be witnesses or to provide any further testimony about this incident? No. The only, uh, in fact, the only evidence that you have um, about you know, direct eyewitness evidence is the, is the testimony from the complainant, is that correct? Uh, yes, that is correct. And the officers that responded, but yes. Okay. Um, did you make, were you able to make any observations about Mr. Reed's condition on that short video that you saw? Um, yes, I was. What, did you, did he appear intoxicated to you? Uh, he appeared unruly. What led you to that conclusion? The physical assault that took place. Did he actually touch the complainant? He in, did, on the yes. Video? How many times? Um, at least twice. Okay. Did she fall over? She did not, no. And did she press charges? She did not. Um, she was given the opportunity to press charges? That's correct. Okay. Um, do you know who called uh, the police, uh, to, to, uh, which resulted in Mr. Reed being ejected from the bar? I believe it was a concerned citizen approached uh, one of our officers in the downtown area on foot. Do you know who made the call? I can find out if you let me refer to it. Sure. Okay. It was. Yes, uh, Ethan Rutledge. And do you know where he was when he made the call? Um, he was approached in the downtown area. He Did he approach an officer? He did, yes. Okay. Officer Capuano. Do you know whether any other calls came in about this incident from anybody else? I do not. No, I don't believe so. You're not aware that the tavern may have called the police on its own to help eject this individual? No. So other than the one shot at the bar and, and the complainant's testimony, you don't have any other evidence that, that Mr. Reed was served any other alcoholic beverages, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. I'd like to call uh, Mr. Aldrich briefly to testify. Stand up. No. Been sworn. No, been just, speak in, just speak into the mic, please. Uh, um, and just as a... Brian, do you want to call another witness or first? Or do you want her to call her witnesses? Do you have any other witnesses? I'm sorry. Me? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, yeah. we can proceed with uh, the establishment's witnesses. Thank you. You can proceed with... Okay, their witnesses. Um, okay. You know what? If you could just put this right, you have to yeah, almost. almost yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Right. Thank you. <laughs> it's really hard with these. High yeah, I, I hear you. Um, the, because this isn't in a courtroom, and this is a this is an adjudicatory hearing with the select board. I'm going to probably direct Mr. Aldrich more than I ordinarily would uh, in a courtroom because he's very nervous and he's not used to, and he hasn't had a lot of time to 
to prepare for this. So just so that, that that's clear, I'm not trying to tell him what to say, but he's he's a little. He's, I mean, he's I, get, I know. <laughs> I know what happened. Just talking yeah. in this environment. Just so, so don't do this every day, you know. Yeah. So you arrived at the tavern bar on that night at some point. Yeah, about I want to say between seven fifteen and seven thirty. I uh, I started. Uh, I walked in the doors. Did you observe anything when you walked in the door? Yes, I did. Um, as you, I heard about the incident, and then uh, I approached him immediately, and then he pulled me in the bathroom and trying to talk to me, and I could see that he was like, he, I don't think it was as much alcohol as he was doing something else, honestly. And then I, as soon as I walked out, I told my manager, I was like, he I went exactly like that, and I was like, he's had enough. And then I kept an eye on him, and he 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 wasn't served. I did not see him uh, serve another drink. And I was keeping an eye on him because he started going up to other patrons and just being really rude and you know obscene towards them. So I asked him to leave, and then he wouldn't. And then he like held on to the bar, and like I you know I tried to so I don't put my hands on anybody unless. You know, and then he attacked me, and that's when I grabbed him. I started walking out, and then the other officer, he was standing at the door because we already were on. I'm the one that I'm pretty sure I told Ethan to go get the cop because he just wasn't listening to me at all, and I wasn't going to physically assault him to get him out of the bar. And then when he did that to me, I had him. I was pushing him towards the door, and that's when the officer, uh, I don't, it wasn't you, it was the other officer, uh, bald guy i believe but uh he came in ran in and assisted me because i got him in a headlock on the ground after he swung at me and the cop came in told him who i was and then the cop the officer took over and that was that we tried calming him down he would be just he would not calm down and you didn't personally observe him drinking no not at all he did not i wouldn't let the bartender ever serve him another drink once i walked in there i thought as soon as i went like that and they listened to me as soon as i told him he's had way too much you know or whatever he just he, he doesn't need to be drinking anymore they they were fine and that was early and if he got in there at six and i, I don't see him he was not drinking at all while i was there thank you yep. um do you have any other questions for the, this witness attorney winner um, just to clarify, maybe you said it already, uh, Mr. Aldrich, but what time did you arrive? Uh, about 7.15, um, between 7.15 and 7.30 is when I walked in the door. I don't know exactly the time, but it was about that time. I'm usually a half an hour early so I can set up my little table and everything and get ready to guard people. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. And uh, Mr. Petruzzi, um, did you arrive at the bar that, that, that night at some point? Uh, I arrived at the bar uh, after the police had already been, uh, after the police were already there. So after the altercation had taken place, when I got there, uh, Tim Capuano and the other officer had Eric outside already. Okay. Were you informed of this incident? Um, did you just show up or did you, did you show up for a reason? Uh, Holly, my girlfriend and I were at the bar or she was at the bar previous. We went to get dinner and all of this happened while we were at dinner. So we had we're on our way home from dinner and my bartender had messaged me saying, Hey, you know, Eric flipped out at the bar. So we redirected right to the bar. And like I said, by the time I got there, they had already had him removed from the bar. And the bartender that night was, uh, Mr. Demick. Uh, Damick Ryan was okay. one of the bartenders. Then Jordan Rowe is my manager bartender. And, uh, does Damick Ryan work for you anymore? Uh, no, Damick was terminated after the incident. Um, your your staff has all had tips training is that correct yes um have you made any arrangements for further training since this incident with your staff after after this happened and i saw the videos i decided that i wanted everyone to be re-tip re certified including myself okay um i don't have any other questions for these witnesses mr winner do you have any questions um, I have no further questions uh, for Mr. Patrizzi. Um, and Mr. Chairman, um, unless you have any further evidence or, or witnesses, um, counsel, um, I would ask uh, the chairman to invite you to make any kind of state. Yeah, and from the board. We, we do have a, a couple questions. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's where I was going. Go ahead. You want to go first? 
Perfect. Go ahead, oh, Carol. Carol. Yes. I just want to verify that Mr. Ryan no longer works with you. That is correct. Okay. And you have gone over procedures as his behavior was not acceptable. Correct. Okay. My question was, was, um, was the bartender relieved of his duties because of this incident or some other incident? Yes. Yes, to which one? <laughs> because of this incident, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think we have any further questions from the board. At, at this point, I think we would be willing to stipulate that um, Mr. Reed was served at least one alcoholic beverage. That's was on the tape. We're not we're not going to dispute that at this point. Um, in terms of the rest of the testimony of his mother, there's no independent corroboration uh, of that. So, and the and the charge is that you know a person was served an alcoholic beverage while they were intoxicated. Um, so we would um, we would stipulate to the, to the extent you know that that happened. Uh, it looks like, but but as far as multiple counts of, of that, there's there that's not charged. So we would ask you to uh, um, use your best judgment and consider the track record of this place and its owner. Um, consider the steps that they've taken since this has happened um, to prevent anything like this from happening in the future. Um, I think they've been a good Deerfield citizen. I was before you a few years ago when they first got their liquor license. Um, and I think they've tried to do the right thing. I think this was um, an extraordinary incident. I think there were some contributing factors that were way out of their control um, in this case. And I would ask that you, um, you know, come to a come to a solution that that is fair and reasonable under the all of the circumstances presented. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan. Mr. Chairman, uh, if it's okay for me to jump in here, I, I was gonna ask if you could invite council to, to make a closing statement, but I think that's what just happened. Um, so if, um, if there's no further testimony or evidence, um, you could entertain a motion to close the public hearing. We'll make a motion to close the public hearing. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Chair McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. The hearing is closed. Okay, and so Mr. Chairman, now that the public hearing is closed, and for the members of the board, I'm sort of taking off my my uh, prosecutor's hat, if you will. And now that you've got the evidence before you, I'll return sort of as town council here to, to guide you through the next steps. So you've got uh, a couple documents in front of you. You've got three narratives. Uh, you have a video, which I understand you haven't seen yet, but you could uh, take the time to play that or watch that. And um, you need to look at these and, and decide, you know, what facts you can deduce from them. And the standard here is, you know, essentially substantial evidence. So this is not a criminal trial. Uh, nobody needs to prove anything beyond a reasonable doubt here. So with a fair view of the evidence, uh, is there evidence that would suggest to a reasonable person that a fact did or did not occur? So when you're looking through this, uh, you know, be mindful of that standard and uh, start to uh, you know, digest what you've heard tonight. If you wanna take some time and look through the reports, um, you're welcome to do that. There's actually no requirement that you um, reach a decision tonight, although you know, traditionally, uh, uh, board would, um, but you can take the time to look through the reports and uh, watch the video and return and have further deliberations on it. Um, but if you want to proceed this evening, I can you know, walk you through some of those things and talk about some of the case law as to what uh, a Section 69 violation uh, is and what uh, you would have to find to determine that a violation had occurred. And that part's actually pretty simple. I might as well just say it. There's just three elements. Um, one, you have to find that the individual was intoxicated on the premises. Um, so knowing what you know after hearing the evidence, can you make a finding that the person in question was intoxicated at the tavern? The second prong is that the employee involved knew or should have known 
that the person was intoxicated? And then three, did that employee sell or provide alcohol to the individual? So you heard counsel uh, state in a couple of different ways, and rightly so, um, the term direct evidence. So there's case law that the board would have to find, and you know, uh, after the board, the ABCC would have to find whether or not there was quote unquote direct evidence uh, of those three elements. Now, the opposite of direct uh, evidence is hearsay, right? So is there evidence before you uh, that is not hearsay that each of those three elements occurred? So that's your fact-finding mission. Uh, so before we even go into whether or not uh, a sanction is in order or what those sanctions could possibly be, I'd ask you to go through what you've heard tonight and see if you can agree upon um, a result for each of those three factors. And if you want, you can go down them one at a time um, and discuss them one at a time, uh, however you wish to proceed. But certainly your factual findings on those three are gonna dictate what happens next. I actually just had a question. Um, I don't know if it, since we closed the hearing. You can't ask them a question, you can ask Brian a question. Well, I, well, this, no, it wasn't, a, it wasn't about, I wanted to know if there was a breathalyzer. Uh, no, I think it's too late. To it's ask. too late to ask that, but I would like to watch that video. Sure. Yeah. No, I've got a DVD version of it, um, if that works here. Do you have a DVD? We, yeah. we can swap. Old school. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we need is USB. Well, I'll let you play the USB if you. Is it bad? <laughs> I want it bad. Yes. <laughs> but I'll loan it then. Thank you. In the interest of. There's a hookup in the front, Johnson. The right yeah, one, bottom, right hand side. Bottom left. The left hand side, bottom left. Finder folder. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be, uh, if you take one second. Go to the store and go to the. It's going to be the store and go. It'll be the store and go. Yeah. The oh. DVD drive. Yeah. Gotcha.
So Brian, do you want to take us through one by one? Sure, sure. And um, has everybody had a chance to, to read the narratives from Officer um, Boland, Capuano, and Fitzgerald? No, I have not seen the Capuano. And... No, I don't, have I don't you, do you want copies of those as well? Could I get a copy of those? Of, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Trevor, Trevor, they need copies. Yes, yeah, definitely. I'll see. Tim, was that video at 7.30? 7.28. 7 7.28, okay, thank you. We, we could ask, can we ask? Can we ask for um, other video, extended video, Brian? Well, the hearing's closed now. Yeah, yeah. okay. So no. your original sorry sure okay. oh wait there's one more page that goes along right no problem
Brian, do you want to start walking us through each step? Sure. If you're ready. Yes. yes so I'd like to start with a third prong um, that the individual was sold uh, or given alcohol by an employee. So I think that's essentially stipulated to at this point, at least with respect to the one shot at 730 that's shown on the video. Right. So um, as counsel pointed out, and I'll, I'll state for the record, I agree, there's only one charge here. Um, so it's, it's just this one incident, one violation that's being considered by the board. So you've read the report, you've uh, seen the video, and you've heard um, uh, Officer Bowen's testimony. So the first question to the board is, can you make a finding that uh, an employee of the tavern provided or sold alcohol uh, to this individual? I can, yes. Is that the yes. consensus of the board? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, then I'd like to go to the first prong and, and I'm going to focus it just on, you know, this one, around the time period of this one drink, since that's, you know, uncontested, I think. Uh, is there evidence that uh, the, a reasonable person um, could conclude based on that this individual was intoxicated at that time? So I can, I can sort of walk through the report in the video, but based on what you've seen, um, uh, Officer Capuano's report, which was later in the evening, uh, Officer Fitzgerald's report, um, and then uh, the testimony of Officer Bolin, uh, do you find that to be reasonable evidence that uh, this individual was intoxicated at the time he had that drink? Uh, and uh, just, excuse me, before you answer that, um, you also heard from Mr. Aldrich and Mr. Patrizzi 
Um, and I didn't write down all of their testimony, but I, I, two or three comments that they made did stand out to me. I'll just highlight them for you. Um, Mr. Aldrich testified twice, and I quote, he's had enough, and another time, way too much. Um, Mr. Patrizzi, although he said that he arrived uh, later in the evening around 930, characterized uh, the subject individual's behavior. He said, Eric flipped out. Um, so you've got uh, a number of different sources of statements and pieces of evidence that you can draw from. And then the question, of course, is, was this individual intoxicated at that time? Yes. I think so. Is that the consensus of the board? I can, from the officer's testimonies, I can conclude that, but I could not conclude that from the video by itself. Right. Okay. That he was intoxicated. Okay. But uh, in total, um, is that a finding the board is comfortable making? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then the last prong, based on all the evidence you've heard this evening, should the employee who served this individual uh, known or did he know at that time that this individual was intoxicated? Yes. Yes. Is that the consensus of the board? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, I'd ask you to just make a motion and find those um, make those findings. So uh, you could do it all at once. Um, and I'd ask that the motion be that the board find that the individual was intoxicated on the premises, that the employee knew or should have known that he was intoxicated, and that the employee served him or provided him alcohol. I'll make, I'll make a motion that he was intoxicated on the, promise, on the premises, that he was served on the premises, and that the employee should have known he was intoxicated when served. And I, I will second that. Okay. And the next uh, motion I'd ask you to consider is um, section 69 of chapter 138. We're going to take a vote on that first. Oh, I'm sorry. I jumped ahead of you. My apologies. No further discussion. No further discussion. No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Chairman no. McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the next um, motion I'd ask you to consider is um, with respect to the violation itself. So now you've found those operative facts um, and uh, section 69 of chapter 138, section um, 2.05, uh, two of uh, uh, section 204 of the CMR. And then lastly, uh, section 247-15 of your bylaw uh, all prohibit the service of an intoxicated person or any illegal activities. And certainly a violation of the statute would be an illegal activity. So now that you found those three operative facts, I'd ask you to make a finding that um, violations of those provisions of law occurred or a violation, excuse me, I misspoke. A violation occurred. I'll make a motion that the uh, a violation has occurred um, in the said chapters. I mean, you want to list them at, pursuant to those uh, chapters and bylaws? Uh, that's sufficient. I, I cited them for the record. Yeah, you did. I assume you're incorporating that. I am. And yep. I second that. I don't think I have it. Any further discussion? No, all um, those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Okay, so now the ultimate question is, what do you want to do now that you have found that there was a violation, in fact, supporting a violation? So um, there are a couple of things to consider. Uh, you obviously know your town and this establishment much better than I do. Um, there are a couple of factors. Usually we call them, you know, aggravating factors. Is this the first violation? Is this second violation? Have there been multiple violations? Uh, there's been no evidence and nothing was cited in your hearing notice that this is other than a first violation. So no one's put any evidence in that this is a subsequent violation or one in a series of violations. So it's singular. Um, you can think about uh, aggravating factors in terms of uh, what were the consequences of this violation, the circumstances that it arose in, um, you know, what were the results of this violation? Was anybody hurt? You know, what were the police resources or involvement, things like that. Um, and then we have a number of decisions from the ABCC that 
um, you know, can guide you. And, you know, unfortunately, um, I wish I could tell you what the answer is, but I can't. Uh, this is your job to come up with what you think is the appropriate sanction. So obviously on, uh, on the front end of the scale, uh, there's nothing. You can, you can dismiss, you can issue essentially a reprimand, uh, a warning. Um, to my knowledge, and I reviewed your bylaws, you don't uh, appear to me to have any provision that, that requires you to um, issue a certain kind of sanction in the first instance. Um, so I, I think you can use your best judgment here. And uh, some of the cases that we've gotten from the ABCC, and I'm just gonna cite a couple of them so you have a sense of, of uh, at least decisions that they've issued or affirmed in the past. Um, and I'm gonna try to focus them on singular violations of just this statute. Um, there's a case, um, Scranton Rawbar, which is out of Falmouth, uh, despite the name Scranton Rawbar, um, for one violation of this section, which was serving someone intoxicated, they issued a four-day suspension with two days suspended of that, sent, that, that suspension. Um, so the, the liquor license was only suspended for two days, and then the other two days were suspended for essentially a two-year probationary period. So as long as there were no further violations, they never had to serve the other two days. Uh, a similar result was reached in the Royal Garden, which is a Kingston case, town of Kingston. Same result, four days um, suspension, but two of those days were stayed pending good uh, behavior for the next two years. Um, on the other end of the scale, there were some cases, uh, Boston Ballroom, that's a 2012 case, uh, where there was a seven day uh, suspension issued with three of those days suspended. And that case was a little different than this one. There were two violations. Um, and then there's a, uh, I'm just sort of moving away on the more extreme side here, um, the Salty Dog case, which is out of Worcester, that was a 14 day suspension um, with four of those days stayed. Uh, but in that case, uh, not only was there service to an intoxicated individual, but that intoxicated individual was a minor. Uh, and there were some aggravating factors in that case that weren't present here. So that's a, sort of the, the farther or farthest end of the scale, that length of suspension. So it's, it's up to you to consider um, what you think, uh, based on the evidence, an appropriate sanction would be. And um, you know, I'll mention to you that whatever you impose tonight, it, nothing or something, um, will issue a written order. And you're going to have to pick, if you decide to select a suspension, um, whether it's stayed or imposed, um, after we issue the written order, the establishment has a chance to appeal it. So you're going to have to pick a date when that order, that suspension would be effective. And you're going to have to pick a date that's sometime in the future so that they have a chance to appeal it. So there's a requirement that we not issue a suspension, you know, any sooner than five days after the, um, the order is issued, because, of course, they deserve a chance to appeal it. That's the law. Um, so I'll just add that little caveat. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about um, sanctions or suspensions or any of those cases that I just mentioned. Thank you. Well, I, I mean, in my opinion, I think it's clear something happened. So I would be in support of, of a suspension. However, um, there was mitigation on the part of the establishment. You know, they did do tr uh, tip training. They did fire the employee. Apparently the person um, acted, Mr. Aldridge acted uh, responsibly. Um, so having it suspended you know, on a probationary period would seem reasonable, mm -hmm. but I do think it's serious enough and it's clear that something happened and our officers were put at risk. Um, I think, you know, something should have been done maybe earlier so that, um, you know, our officers were not at risk. I think that's totally unacceptable. So I, I agree with that. I think, um, you know, I was excited to see, you know, the, the bar open again and have this, you know, uh, business in town. And, um, and but, I, but I am very, very concerned about um, this kind of behavior. And I, 
when people get hurt. Um, I just I'm worried about um, the precedent of not acting on this. So I, I you know, I do agree that uh, some suspension is in order, but um, but maybe stayed, you know, so and and in a probationary period, so we can um, really make the case how serious we are about our liquor licenses and um, the. Um, privilege it is to have a liquor license in Deerfield and to be able to offer that kind of entertainment to to people but you know a lot of serious things can happen if people are are overserved and um and I do appreciate you know Mr. Aldridge you know seeing that and trying to take action and um I'm sure it can be difficult um and so it's I'm I'm really want you to take it to heart that how serious we take this and um yeah. And we appreciate the fact that you are, you know, you did terminate the employee and, you know, you did try to act responsible. I mean, I, I am thinking a seven day suspension with six days as a probationary. Just, I don't know. What do you think? I'd take your advice. And okay. Um, see what you weigh in. You know, obviously. I guess being right up front, you know, I have a little bias because I served as a police officer in this town for 14 years. Um, but the um, back in my day, if this was the instance, if the individual had been charged with assault and battery with a deadly weapon, because in my day, uh, if you kick somebody with a shot foot, it was considered a deadly weapon. Um, so the individual kind of got off easier than they could have in the old days. Um, we don't have any or previous complaints against this establishment. Um, you know, we all, well, I live just down the street from it, but I mean, um, so there's a lot of things that we have to consider. And I think it is appropriate that we uh, do look at a seven day suspension um, suspended with two, two year probationary period, uh, sub subsequent violations. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> license for seven days. Um, only so, because you're, so, you're, so you're proposing no suspension? No, oh, I, I would if there was subsequent complaints that had come before okay. us. Okay. But, you know, um, I know there probably has been, but it just hasn't come to, to us, the board, so we can't act on that. Um, so that's kind of the way I'm leaning right at the moment. So you're leaning seven days suspended and, and to have it uh, stayed. Just, yeah, just kind of pending any well, any other lack of a better word hanging over their head. Any any um other yeah. any other complaints brought to us in yeah. the next two years. Yeah. I, I think I'm I mean I guess I would be supportive of that. I just want you to know I you know, I agree 100% with Trevor. This is, you know, really serious. And um, having our police officers at risk is very serious in my mind and is just not acceptable. So, um, and at the public, I mean, apparently he could walk home, but if he had gotten in a vehicle, that would have been I, very scary. I didn't let him walk. Yeah, so. Um, Brian, do, do you, um... Do you have um, not any advice on this, but how, how we would um, how we would um, construct the the um, sentence? So if it's the so depending on which way the motion goes and you ultimately decide if you do seven days with six stayed, if you will, mm -hmm. um, you're going to have to pick which day the one day would be effective. Mm -hmm. um, and that's up to you. Uh, and it's really, you know, you got to use your best judgment here. Uh, I imagine weekend, you know, Friday, Saturday nights are the most lucrative. Mm -hmm. um, so it hits them the hardest. If you impose it on one of those nights, you could still impose a one day suspension, but impose it on a day when it's, it's not as consequential to them. So they still are suspended one day, um, but it's not as big as a hit, you know, in terms of their revenue for that evening or that, that day. Um, so that's that's one factor to consider as you go through it. If you do seven days, but then or stay all seven days, a little less relevant. 
um, since it's not going to be served. Unless uh, another file, another violation occurs in, in two years. Right. And at that point, we'd be talking about not only imposing this sanction, Correct. Um, but whatever new sanction comes as a result of the new violation. So, right. you know, we'd be back in theory, this is hypothetical, but if we were back, we'd be back on a subsequent violation. So maybe we're talking about 14 at that point. I don't know. Right. Yeah, because, you know, if they're caught serving minors or something of that, would be a right. I mean, then I don't want to speculate here, but right. Then you'd have to take that back up. Yeah. And of course, there'd have to be evidence that, you know, just like we did tonight, that there was another violation. Yeah, yeah. It's not automatic. You'd still have to hold a new hearing. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, again, some of the cases that I, I cited, they're just examples. You know, they're just specimens. You're not bound by them in terms of precedent. It's just to give you a sense of, um, you know, other decisions reached in other cases. And some of them on the more extreme end were 14 days. On the lighter end, we're four with suspended. Um, so I, you know, from what I've heard from the board, you're somewhere in between. Um, but you know, it, it's up to you. You know what you think is reasonable based on the situation. Um, not advocating for the the tavern, but I'm sure they'd like to see no suspension. Um, but I, I guess their second place choice might be if you're going to do a suspension, stay it in its entirety, um, and they would acknowledge receiving the warning. Um, so that's that's within your discretion, certainly to to consider. Um, but you could also do a, a lesser suspension and do the one day with the remainder stayed. And again, the the idea here, this is not to punish someone; it's right. to incentivize compliance. Correct. Because right. you don't want to see them again. I mean, that's that's the public interest that you're serving here is to not have another violation, not right. to put somebody out of business or hurt a local business. Absolutely not but to see a business that complies with the law and succeeds. I guess that's why I'd, I'd be supportive of suspending it for two years. So, you know, it's, um, like I said earlier, oh. it's just kind of holding it over your head that, you know, um, and usually when that happens, people do their due diligence just a little bit better. And, uh, so um, you know, that's how I would, so. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want to make a motion? I, I mean, you want me, well, I'll then I I'm, will propose a new motion okay. to suspend the seven days, seven, have a seven day suspension, but suspend it for two year probation. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to clarify before, um, so the seven days is hanging over their head, but if there is another violation, it's the seven days plus whatever the new violation would if, be. Yeah, if, if they're found the, guilty of a right. new Right, right. If there is actually a new okay. violation. We'd have a new hearing and we go through that whole process again, but right, that's what it would be. The seven days would kick in plus whatever new sanction you might impose for the second or third or fourth violation. Right, and a two year, probationary period is is perfectly acceptable legally well so I, I can't ever tell you what would happen on an appeal and they certainly have the right to appeal it but it's just, uh, a two-year stay of the sanction is consistent with with those abcc decisions that i mentioned all right then i feel comfortable with the two years okay i'll second that motion any further discussion no hearing none all those in favor Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Walton. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the effective date of the decision is oh. when? Well, it would be, uh, Brian, how many days do they have to appeal? Ten. Ten. Well, one, we're going to write it up and we'll provide that to you for signatures and we'll send it out. Right. And they'll have five days to appeal that. But since none of those days are being served, um, it'll be effective you know, after the appeal period uh, runs from your decision. Yep. Okay. okay. The five-day appeal period runs from tonight or the five-day appeal period runs from the date that they signed the decision? I think the date we signed the decision. The date you sign it. Yeah. I mean, you don't have anything to appeal yet. Right. Yep. I'm just yep. checking. Yep. yep. Sure. That's all. As will the two years. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And and uh, we'll write that up for you. And um, thank we'll, you. We'll send it over to you, and you can take it up at your next uh, available opportunity and sign it and get it out. Okay. Thank you very much for your help and guidance. Good no, help. thank you, um, all of you, for having us and for letting us uh, um, MC your hearing tonight. Uh, appreciate it. And nice to see everyone again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Elizabeth. Brian, for being excellent for us. And thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank, thank, you, for thank, thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you for your consideration. Really sure. appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for staying on, Chief. Yeah, thank you, John. Oh, my pleasure. You, uh, you guys didn't even need me. Oh, did you want to go back to the capital stuff? We can if you want. Um, I just, I guess, to go back on the uh, the sewer, it's up. I guess we'll, we should have a meeting at some point with all of us and maybe our engineers to to decide what we want to do going forward for next year to decide on what to do for Old Deerfield. Do we want to group it in with what, with a USDA grant? I know we have other discussions to have in town, but I just was thinking if. We're going to do the stuff in South Hip. It'd be great to group it in instead of paying for it all on our own. The, the, the difference between the 19 million and the 2.7 or the 21.5 or whatever, the alternates there. But we can decide that later. I just want you to think about I, I guess how we go ahead. Yeah. There I are mean, other stuff to think about before we get to that decision, right? Yeah, and what nonprofits can help? So yeah, all the I, other. I think, I, I think we need to get the nonprofits, the nonprofits on. I think we need to look at what um, Aquarian is going to put offer. Maybe uh, offer us. Um, we don't know what that that potentially could be too. Um, I'm just thinking. We got to be fairly nimble because of the I know. opportunity to get this grant money. Because otherwise, we'll wait and go. Mm, okay, now we'll do it, and then I know it's I all think, gone. I know. I think we have to have. Maybe we'll have another working group meeting with. I, I was just going to say. Bring everybody I think we together really then. have to have another meeting where we can look at all the options mm -hmm. and and lay and, it out on the table in a timeline. Yep. And I think we have. I mean, we need to follow up. Are we, I haven't had any more conversation with Aquarian, but I know they were interested. And that, you know, puts, I mean, that potentially puts a $20 million asset on tax roll. Um, that has that's something that figures in too. So, I think it's not a great idea for our residents. But that's to be determined. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's the whole town. Oh. Well, there's either yeah. the Old Deerfield or both. Well, so, I, know, I mean, be between 25 and 45 or $50 million worth on the tax roll. I mean, if, if they're going to pay for the debt and, they're, and you get stuff happening like that, I don't know. I mean, it's hard. We need to look at we'll it. We'll have a bigger conversation with the public on that, for sure. Okay. Yes. Sounds I, good. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm just open. I know. Yeah. yeah. And, and I fine. think all of us need to be well, flushed out and discussed. Yeah. These, those are alternatives that we didn't know about. Yep. Even a couple months ago. Right. Oh, right. Okay. Right. So, and so, um, and I think it's going to need more investigation into it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, because I guess technically they're a public utility. Yep. Well, yes. they're they're, yes. gonna, they're they they are absolutely um, yeah. regulated by DPU. So. Yeah. They're, they can only do 5% above their operating and capital expenses. You know, maybe they, they can time. operate cheaper than we can. I don't know. My issue was that they're going to give us a rate based on the work they're going to do in Plymouth and the rate they're going to do here and the rate they're going to do in any other part of the state. It's not a Deerfield rate. That's the issue. Well, it's any project. 
anywhere in the state, whatever they're going to do for capital, like Eversource, when they we have a notice of the rate increase of 13%, they're not doing 13% worth of work in Deerfield. You know what I mean? I know. I don't know. I, I, I'm just we'll talk saying about it later. That, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, we but, don't really know what the impact of having it on the tax on the tax roll. You know, I mean, I just look at Northfield Mountain mm -hmm. or, you know, some of the other utilities. They, you look at that, what it impacts your tax rate. Mm -hmm. So if your tax rate's going down and you don't have to pay and, you know, what's what's, a what's the bit delta? More, yeah. Yep, I get it. I know. That's why Irving but I do. Off because most of Northfield Mountain yeah. is, in, is Irving. in Irving. Right. So as a result, Irving has a huge tax write-off in it. In right, in it. but this isn't, well, so, I know. You know, this there's, isn't there's a, a lot of this, this twists and turns that we got to no. investigate. No, it's of not course. something we're going to make up our minds on even in the next month. So. Yeah, but I do but think it's, it's important to put this amount of money that on the capital plan yes. to finish the plant and, and phase two, because yes. we're going to do that regardless of what right. happens. I don't see anything there that should tell us to stop what we're actually doing now. Right. Right. Because yep. I agree with that. Um, okay. Doing that, getting everything else shovel ready that that's, has anything to do with this uh, wastewater. Um, yeah. Well, it's important. Yep. Other than Trevor, so do you to pack. What's that? Other than pack, you have to pack your bags. Right. Do, do you want to vote on this? Do you need to vote on this? Or I you... think if you have consensus on making yeah. sure that those numbers, you agree on the numbers. Um, that would work just fine. Okay, yeah. we do. Um, and then the capital for the for the the building. So this is the here. old grammar school conversion for town hall slash municipal administration. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I just found a couple things I'm going to tweak on the application as I was sitting here. Um, so the, basically, I described the rehab more in the terms that Julie Chalfont did as she. Yep. developed the application for CPC funds because the first focus of that, which is what you all discussed with her the last time you saw her yeah. and what was presented to... It's important that we get the uh, engineering as soon as we can. And so this is on, it's on the radar screen for CPC. Mm -hmm. That application all was right. sent to them. Um, they have their first meeting to discuss these things. I believe it's tomorrow night. Yep. Um, essentially, this is the first tranche of that request, which is $475,000. I went back and used the number that Julie put on, and I told Mark I was going to do that. So now that I have this with a couple of little like language tweaks on the project item, it's substantially complete and ready to send back to them as a revision. Okay. The, o the other one that I was looking at was, and this is Carolyn who brought it up in the capital planning meeting, was the, the distinction between the historic preservation and change for municipal administration in the old grammar school versus the, this concept of creating a community slash senior use addition. Um, adjacent to that building or connected to that building. So I hadn't, it was a very bare application that we put forth in December or in November. Yeah. So we need to go back and tweak that and explain it a little bit more. So I was going to work on that. I know I had a short conversation with Tim Milchi about it. You know, the, the old grammar school is most definitely CPA. Right. It fits within the historic but preservation. Yes. The addition that we're talking about is not. Correct. So that could be about a six million dollar project yep. that would have to be funded in some way, which we've asked our state reps. To I was just going to say it was an ARPA earmark versus a, a budget earmark. Right. Uh, budget earmarks. Um, Joe was very clear that had to be less than five hundred thousand on the on in general to be successful. And that's why we um, we're talking about the um, senior center community center was going to be the one time ARPA earmark, which is the nine point four billion dollar amount that people are talking about. The 
budget earmark that was separately, and that was going to be um, our other ask. And now I can't even remember. <laughs> I don't have the I don't have the list. Hold Do you on. remember? I, I hold on, had, I have it in my email. We made this so clear in our in our email. And did, so Denise and I finished that. She this finished is, it this afternoon. You know, this is yeah, um, this is I'm sorry. Out. This wiped is a 13 hour day today I know. so far. Trust me. Um believe me, I know it. And I actually have been talking so much that I I have a you know, my voice is going, yeah. but um, I can't I remember it was 300, we put in 350. So what? a budget, so it was a budget earmark for $350,000 for the town common. Oh, for the town common. Okay, yeah. all right. So the reason why we were asking for the budget earmark for the town common, because we had a very good story that because of route one, you know, the state highway, we were not able to Do successfully complete, complete the complete streets grant and and successfully do it and so we were up in the air i mean we'd have to fund this ourselves so we had asked for a budget earmark for the town common yep. and a arpa earmark for, for the, senior, the senior center community, community center, center. Yep. thank you casey for <laughs> clarifying no, thank you, our list <laughs> no, that was Denise. Mostly Denise and I working on it, but oh, mostly Denise. Oh my God, I can't. She sent it. it out this afternoon. It'll be in your email. Yes, you were blind. But we were talking. so clear on that, um, and I, I felt like we had a good story for both. It's a three-town community center, senior center. Mm -hmm. Our seniors are homeless. The Susan Suzanne Bumps report highlighted how gross our our town hall, the condition of our town. I mean, the grammar school senior center. And that um, we really felt the town common, you know, all these communities around us are getting complete street money. We put in a lot of time, we put in already invested town money, and we can't compete on the complete streets. And I think that's terrible. And that's because of DOT owns the, Mass DOT owns the, you know, highway property that abuts town common. So we don't, we're not eligible. Um, before I forget, can we uh, uh, make a motion to appoint Bill Hilton? So I think if you saw that we did a little research to make sure we thought you had the space on that committee. So mm -hmm. um, we just, because we couldn't find all of the information right away. So Jennifer and Pat did a research project for you. And I would uh, second that. Yeah, so make a motion to appoint uh, Bill Hildreth to the Town, Town Advisory Building Town Committee. Town Building Advisory, Town Building Advisory, Committee. Advisory <laughs> Committee. One of those acronyms. Mm -hmm. um, I think it'd be a great, great addition. Second oh, great. The motion, so. Perfect. <laughs> Any further discussion? No. No. Thank you for serving. Yes. All those of you. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carol. I did. Oh, darn, that means I'm going to have to talk to him. I'm so kidding, no. <laughs> you have um, the placeholder for NUPRO. Did you want to bring that up? I do. And so let me just give you the brief. We, council and their council, reached a substantive agreement on the purchase and sale between the town of Deerfield and NUPRO. So I suggest that the select board approve the agreement, and I printed it late this afternoon, um, allowing for minor changes to be made by council to facilitate finalizing this agreement and further authorize the chair to sign at his convenience. I, I would make that motion. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye, Chair, Aye. Aye, Chair McDaniel. Aye, Carol. Aye, Dave Walton. Subject is this one. Tom? And then you had the accommodation for um, Gary? Yes. So we had, since somebody, since we've had um, more communication in the office between our offices and wastewater and um, the assistant superintendent, it's become very clear that 
Gary Benoit should be recognized for all of his hard work to help limp along the wastewater treatment plants and work with, I'll print you, I, give me a second, I'll go print another one, um, to help us limp along with the wastewater treatment plants. We are moving forward with um, the MOU, uh, town manager Bachelman signed it the other day. Oh, really? It's been forwarded to both DPC and um, DEP. Well, DPC is writing the letter in response. Okay. So it's been sure Peter been Thurber is the gentleman the from um, DPC that's been working on it. So we have like four days left. They're working on the okay, letter, great. Trevor. Thank so, you. and there's also we actually before the MOU was signed, we had sort of set up some training back and forth. So both Amherst and our staff are working to coordinate that and get people in place so that Gary can go have a little bit of time off. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we thought accommodation was in, in order and we hope the yeah. board supports sure. that. If you Absolutely. give me a second, I'll print you a new copy of that so you can sign it. Okay. So uh, this is uh, accommodation recognizing and commending Gary Benoit for his service to the citizens of Deerfield. Whereas Gary Benoit has served, has provided con, uh, continuity in, of the operations of the wastewater treatment plants and their administrative functions, ensuring the necessary business of the facilities during the absence of a full staff. Whereas Gary Benoit has given selflessly of his time to ensure the facilities run smoothly and has assisted as needed uh, whenever needed. And where uh, whereas Gary Benoit is deserving at this time of special recognition and accommodation. Now, therefore, the Deerfield Select Board recognize and commend Gary Benoit, Benoit for his unfailing commitment to the betterment of our community, and we extend him the utmost appreciation for his time and his continued work with the wastewater treatment plant, given this 9th of March, 2022. I certainly second that, and I, I cannot say thank you enough. He's been solely operating our plant. Yeah, he's been it's amazing. unbelievable. Thank you very much, Gary. Uh, hopefully we have some help for you here shortly. <laughs> I would also just like to make a note that we are, we're, we're actually going through interviews and working with, we're getting some help from DPC as they have told us they would um, to work through some interviews to better, to staff up for those positions as well. But it's very helpful that Amherst was willing to help us. And frankly, I think Gary's really worked exhaustively to keep us uh, to serve the town and keep us moving and I appreciate that as a person but yeah um, and I would like to say that Chris Miller does as well as the assistant superintendent absolutely Everybody's and it's been in. it's been very useful for the two of us to actually get our sort of fingers in the pie so that we yeah. understand a little bit better what Gary's doing for sure and how we can work better with our New colleagues staff. in other towns absolutely. who are facing similar staffing issues that we for are sure yep I, I, so I also, we appreciate you signing that. Yeah. I would also just like to thank Chris Miller. He's been so accommodating. Yes. And mm -hmm. working so hard. Um, why Kevin has been sick. And I yeah. just really, we are also really appreciate that. Yep. I quite it's, agree with it's you. It's like we've been hiring people and throwing them right into the fire. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, okay. No. <laughs> he really wants to go on vacation because yes. he hasn't packed. <laughs> um, well, I'm willing to make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you. Well, according to Robert's rules of order, nothing else could be on the table until we vote on that. Oh, oh, right. Oh. Right. <laughs> well, do we? It's a motion on the table. Poor Trevor really would like to go home. <laughs> as much as I want to read the mail and thank everybody. I uh, will second that motion. Okay. Sorry. I got to go. Yeah. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor. Hi, Trevor. <laughs>